Another gorgeous day at Doug Kingsmore Stadium in Clemson where the Tigers look to open the ACC season with a sweep of Boston College. Clemson taking game two yesterday. A big day for Chad Ferry. He came in hitless on the year. This is his first of the season, a home run that gave Clemson moving them out to a 4-0 lead, only to see the Eagles come back and tie it. But then it's Elijah Henderson, a two-run double. Clemson scored four times in the fourth, three more in the fifth. Henderson with a big day with career highs of three hits and four RBIs as the Tigers knocked off Boston College 12-5. And as you said, Fred, the Tigers a 2 nothing lead in the series. Great pitching in the, uh, in the first uh, game in which it was really a difficult weather condition. Gusts up to 25 miles an hour. Key to the series has been Clemson's pitching overall. Boston College came in hitting 326 as a team. They're hitting only 229 so far in the series. And hi, everybody. Fred Cunningham along with Tim Beray. Again, the Tigers going for the sweep here this afternoon. And Monty Lee has got to be really, really pleased with the pitching staff that he came into the season very, very high on. Yeah, it's been an outstanding pitching staff. But yesterday, 14 hits and 12 runs. Had to put a smile on his face because hitting has been a little bit of a problem so far early in the season as it is for a lot of teams due to the way the weather has has been. All right, let's take a look at that Boston College lineup. We know them for hitting, as Tim mentioned. Peter Burns, after striking out three times on Friday, came back with a couple of hits, including a home run yesterday. Cody Morissette is outstanding. He's got a career-long nine-game hitting streak in progress. The Clemson defense, Davis Sharp, yesterday's starting pitcher, will be in the field playing at first today. Elijah Henderson, who was in the outfield yesterday, will get the start at second. And on the mound for the Tigers, Spencer Strider. No record at this point of the season. He makes his fourth start, his ERA at 1.86, 14 strikeouts, and just a couple of walks so far. Obviously coming back from that major arm surgery a year ago, Tim, and we understand they're going to – they're bringing him along slowly. Hopefully they can get him to 60 pitches today. Yeah, he's on a pitch count. He pitched last Sunday in the victory over South Carolina. He threw 49 pitches in four innings. Of course, that, you know, didn't pitch long enough to get the uh, the victory, but was outstanding in, the, in that uh, game. Five strikeouts and just one walk as he faced 17 batters. So Sal Fralick will lead things off for Boston College, the right fielder. 286 is his average on the season as we get this one underway. He is hitless in the series, 0 for 9 with a walk. First pitch from Strider right in there for the strike. We're underway. 11 Clemson pitchers have more strikeouts than walks so far this year, and that's one of the reasons the staff has been outstanding, and uh, Strider's one of them. Freilich came into this series with an 11-game hitting streak, and that ended on Friday. And again, he is hitless so far in the first two games against Tiger pitching. Misses on the outside, 2-1. and You talked about the setup of the Clemson defense. The uh, first game of this series, both teams had four errors as the wind was brutal. Strike two and swung on and missed. But yesterday... Only one error between the two teams that was committed by uh, Boston College. Tigers fielding at 960 so far for the season. Strider, here comes the 2-2 pitch. Strikes him out, one away. Another good start for Spencer Strider. Yep, blew it right by him. Nice fastball and a good part of the plate. up and inside. So with one away, that brings up the shortstop, Brian Dempsey, senior out of Potomac, Maryland. 354 is his average on the season. Dempsey, one for seven in the series, scored a couple runs and a walk. Takes the cut and misses. You know, you mentioned the the one error yesterday, but it was a huge one. The second baseman for... uh, Boston College, Luke Gold could not catch what would have been the third out of the fourth. That allowed the go-ahead run to come in, and the Tigers wound up scoring four, and that just really turned the game around. Yeah, open the floodgates. See what he comes with on 0-2. Misses high, 1-2. A lot of times 
Sometimes the pitcher might go with an 0-2 waste pitch, but in Strider's case, when he's on a pitch count, I don't think he wants to waste <laughs> anything. And ones that are there, they'll even up at 2-2. Two and two. Another nice afternoon here, bright sunshine, 54 degrees. Got a slight wind, about four miles an hour, and judging by the flags in right center, looks like it's coming off Lake Hartwell as always. Blowing in. 2-2 pitch, ground ball. It'll be handled by James Parker. The throw to Sharp, there's two down. Good job, the ball was not well hit. It was kind of a slow roller. But uh, good job by Parker, who began the season on opening day at third base, but that was switched over to shortstop. Tigers now going with a shift right here as Cody Morissette comes up. Morissette is having an excellent series. He's four for eight. He's knocked in a run. But you've got three Clemson infielders between first and second, as you can see. Morissette's eight for 25 in his career against Clemson coming into this bat. He hit two home runs against the Tigers in the ACC tournament last year, a game that Boston College won seven to five. Spent a couple of minutes talking to Mike Gambino before the game yesterday, and I said that Cody must really like to see Clemson pitching, and he says he just hits. But, yeah, he's had some good luck against Clemson. Yeah. Good look at Cody. All ACC second teamer last year as a freshman. There's a line shot and hit it to a good spot. Shift didn't work that time, although I'm not, don't, not sure if the shortstop could have gotten to that one or not. It's the first hit of the game. We talked about Strider not wasting pitches. That was an 0-2 pitch, and he uh, went with it to a single to center. His fifth hit of the series, five for nine. So that brings up Joe Swazi, the left fielder. Swazi at 420 on the season. He's had a three for nine series so far. Knocked in a run. The uh, number two through four, excuse me, two through five batters in the Boston College order hitting 397 for the season coming into this game. But just 303 in the series. Takes a cut and misses 0 and 2. I say just. I mean, 303 is pretty good <laughs> compared to what they've been doing. But you've got Dempsey 354, Merced 420, Twazi 420, and Cunningham 392. Strike called, and that will end the inning. So Boston College gets a hit, but nothing across. We'll see the Tigers up for the first time when we return to Doug Kingsmore Stadium. Clemson lineup as they look for the sweep today against Boston College coming off a day where they had a season high for runs with 12 and hits with 14. Henderson, Ferry, and Mikowski each with three hits on Saturday, all three in the lineup today. Boston College defense, again, it's a very familiar lineup for the Eagles. Seven or their eight position players have started all 13 games on the season. The Boston College starter, the 6'5 right-hander Emmett Sheehan, one and one is his record, a ERA of 7.84, and it goes, his coach tells us that he's going to be a legitimate 93, 94 mile an hour pitcher for much of the day. Can even get up to 96 or 97, but like a lot of the young pitchers, still trying to figure out how to be a starter. He's coming off his best outing of the season. He went seven innings and only gave up one hit and five runs. Had eight strikeouts, no walks in a win against uh, Fairfield, I believe. So leading things off for the Tigers, here is Dylan Brewer, freshman out of Atlanta, highly regarded freshman. 194 is his average on the season. He's one for four in the series. However, he does have a team best 12 walks so far this year. That's one of the reasons he's moved to the lineup. He gets uh, moved up to lead off. See the fly ball will go out a play to the left side. Joe Swazi chasing after it, and very quickly Brewer is down 0-2. Yeah, I mentioned that uh, Sheehan trying to figure out how to be a starter, and the Tigers hope that 
this isn't the day. You mentioned his impressive performance. That was a crazy couple of games that Boston College played against Fairfield. They scored 39 runs in two games, 20 and 19 20 and in those 19, victories. Yeah. 0-2 pitch. Missed on the inside, one and two. Get your set up inside, almost hit the spot. 1-2 pitch. Missed outside, that evens it up. Brewer, very highly touted prospect out of Lada, South Carolina. And could just imagine what he's going to look like in a year or two once he matures a little bit and gets that body built up a little bit. Good eye. Yep, he's come from 0-2 back to get it to a full count at 3-2. and two. Over the plate, but a little low. Time call by Scott Klein as our home plate umpire today. The 3-2. There's a drive. Right center field. And this is going to go up and off the top of the fence. Brewer is going to come into second. I can't tell. I want to see the replay if Baldelli got any kind of a mid on it at all. Enough to tell, but that ball was close to going out of here, right at the uh, American flag. And you could see the wind has uh, been blowing in, and that ball seemed to carry. He uh, got a lot on it. That's amazing it didn't go out of the park. Uh, yeah, here will be a good view of it. It looks like he just Wait knocked it back in. And now it, that, that hit his glove, and he kind of just flopped it back in. It yeah. Been a, it looks like it would have been a home run. Um, and right now we've got a couple of the umpires are – talking about that as well. He didn't make the grab. It was it, It's almost like a block shot in basketball. That's right. He batted the ball in from going over the fence. That's what it looked like. They're going to look at it, but um, as long as the ball, the question is, did it hit his glove and then hit above the orange line? Above the orange line is a home run, I believe. I think he just brought it back in. <laughs> he yeah. saw the the one fan who you was, would need another camera angle from uh, the left right field line to see if the ball. Here's a new angle for us. Yeah. I mean, it looks like his elbow is actually on the pad, so you would think it's over the fence. It's a little closer. For yeah. You. Hits the glove. Yeah, and he just throws it back in. Yeah, the, uh, the question would have been whether it would have hit uh, above the uh, orange, but he, uh, to me it looks like he just flopped it back into play. So I think it'll probably be as it stands. And here come our two umpires back on the field. Yep, second base. So it's going to be a double and a nice play by Baldelli. A double's not great as a leadoff. That's a lot better than a solo home yeah, run. Yeah, yeah. And <clears throat> the ball was actually in his glove. He just couldn't quite handle his momentum going towards the fence. And uh, obviously he hit the wall and it just kind of knocked it out. So that brings up Elijah Henderson. Henderson having a nice series, three for eight so far. He's knocked in four runs, all four of those yesterday. And he comes in with a runner in scoring position. First pitch inside. A little chin music. Yeah. Henderson hitting 429 with runners in scoring position, but yeah, I think he felt the breeze from that pitch coming in at 88 miles an hour. That was the seventh extra base hit of the series for the Tigers. Takes a cut, misses one and one. Henderson has four RBIs in the uh, series. I guess all of them were yesterday. It's the Tigers in the series in that category. Good look at Dylan Brewer at second, taking a nice lead after that leadoff double.
Sheehan's pitch. Another one <laughs> right up. Right by that ear. Two and one. Keep you from digging in. Yeah. Breeze just above his left shoulder. Two one count. Missed outside. Two and two. Good job by the catcher. Peter Burns keeping it in front of him. He had quite of a workout yesterday. Marty Cleary was working the game with this yesterday and talking about how both pitchers seemed to struggle. You know, it was a beautiful day, just a little bit of an extra breeze and just couldn't get the bite on some of their pitches. And especially for Burns, he had a, quite a workout trying to keep pitches in front of him. Big cut, swing and a miss, and down goes Henderson. There's one away. See what that pitch was, a little breaking ball out over the plate. Pretty good pitch to hit if you're ready for a breaking ball. So with one down, that brings up Kier Meredith, sophomore out of Winston-Salem, and it's obviously one of the big highlights for him this year is just to see him healthy. Absolutely. Only played nine games all last year, started eight. And he's a guy you want to have up with a runner in scoring position, hitting 600 on the season. There's one down here in the first, and Dylan Brewer at second. Fouls it back. Meredith, the reigning ACC Player of the Week, mainly for his work against South Carolina series that you got to work that clinching game of last Sunday. Yes. He's been a very consistent player. Last Sunday he uh, had a hit, a walk, got hit by a batter, and had a single and scored a run. One of everything. Watches that one go in the dirt. Burns keeps it in front of him again, and Brewer heads back to second. 1-1 one, one count. One of the more unusual statistics for the Tigers this year, Clemson's 21-24 in stolen bases, and the only person who's been thrown out all year is Kier Meredith. <laughs> He's three for six, and everybody else is 18 for 18. <laughs> Let's get a look at Peter Burns, who had a big turnaround at the plate yesterday. Holds back. Two and one is the count. He struck out three times on Friday night, then came back, got a couple of hits yesterday. Close, but held back. So it's two and one. There's your strike. That'll leave it up at two and two. That was a good pitch. Sheehan really taking his time right now with a runner at second. Misses, and it's a full count. Ryer Hawkins is on deck for the Tigers. This is the 17th pitch, I believe, of the inning. So the Tigers doing a good job making Sheehan work. Brewer, his lead at second. Check swing, fouled off. He'll stay at three and two. Boston College with their extended road swing to start the season as is normal for a team from the Northeast. They're still about 10 days away from their home opener as Meredith walks. So you got runners at first at second and that means Kier Meredith is on base for the 15th time this season in a game. All 15 games he's made it on board for the Tigers. That's what you want to see. That's what he brings to the club, and that's what the 
Tigers missed last year, as I said, when they only played nine games. Briar Hawkins, sophomore out of coming Georgia, comes up. Two for nine in the series. Scored twice, knocked a couple of runs in. Two fifty his average on the season. Brewer at second, Meredith at first with one down. Holds off, one and zero. Sheehan, as I said, coming off his best game of his career. And uh, he pitched seven innings and only threw 89 pitches. At this rate, he's going to hit 89 pitches in the fourth inning. <laughs> Still only one out. Mike Gambino says he's said it a couple of times. He's got frontline stuff. Right now, he's got a little stressful pitching going on. Here's the 1-0. Grounded off foul to the left side. Nice job of cleaning things up there for the Boston College dugout. One one pitch coming from Sheehan, who does not exactly work quickly. Yes, Misses two and one. Yeah, we just uh, commented that Kier reached Bates for his 15th straight game. You know what the major league record is in that category? And you would think this record would have gotten more attention, especially by the player who holds it. But the record is Ted Williams. Went 84 straight games reaching base. That's 84. insane. And I find well it fascinating over. that DiMaggio holds the record for consecutive games getting a hit, and Williams holds the record for consecutive games reaching base. Those guys were pretty, pretty good. Yep. Imagine that. That's I don't know if it's stretched over two seasons, but, I mean, that's half a season. More than half a season More back then. Season. Well over half yeah, a season. Yeah, 154 games back then. Now, I don't know if it was a carryover from yeah. one season to the next. Could have been. Impressive either way. You can see Hawkins thought that was ball four and said it's strike two, and we've got a full count. Good view of it. Ooh. Yeah, I can see why yeah, it was. I'm going to be I'm going to be political here and say it was close. <laughs> Three two count. Runner going, and there's going to be a shot that's going to go to right center field. It drops for a base hit. The run comes across. The Tigers are on the board. Brewer scores one nothing. Clemson. RBI for Briar Hawkins. Well, that's his third hit of the series. He's now three for five, driven in three runs, and uh, he seemed to go with the pitch very nicely. Kind of out over the plate, went to the opposite field. And got that run in. The Tigers get off to a good start. You know, the first inning has been the best inning for Boston College all year. They've outscored their opponents 22 to 11. But the last two games, the Tigers have scored uh, in their first inning. And that's Briar Hawkins' mom and dad. They got to love that one watching in the seats. You see their son get on board with an RBI. And now Davis Sharp comes up with runners at the corners and still just one out. Sharp takes that first pitch. Davis on the season, a 303 hitter. Got a couple of home runs. Knocked in five. And Clemson is they we know that they can score. Yeah, that's now 121 consecutive games. They've scored a run. Third best active streak in college baseball. East Carolina, uh, excuse me, Eastern Kentucky and Oklahoma, the two teams with 
longer streaks. The, uh, the Tigers are just a little over halfway to the school record in that category. In the 1980s, Clemson scored in 232 consecutive games. That was just, I, I looked that up uh, or saw that notation a little bit earlier, a Bill Wilhelm stretch there mm -hmm. in the 80s. Strike called. Sharp goes down. That's matches his 0 for 4 night. Second strikeout. You know, that streak was done in an era where Coach Wilhelm did not like to sacrifice butt. In fact, uh, in, over the three consecutive years, 1986 to 1988, they had four, six, and three sacrifice bunts the entire season. <laughs> and I remember asking him, Coach, you know, why don't you uh, bunt more? And he said, Tim, I've got these outstanding base stealers, Henry Threadkill and Ray Williams and Mike Kuchar. Why would I want to give up an out? <laughs> well, he had the record to show that maybe that was some pretty good thinking as Chad Ferry takes a strike. His first trip to the plate. Chad, of course, had a big day yesterday. He came in hitless for the season, and he left with three, including a home run and a couple of singles. There's a drive left field. It's going to be at Swazi who pulls it in for the third out. But an RBI single from Briar Hawkins, one of two hits in the inning for the Tigers. They go to the second ahead by a run. Tigers going for the sweep against Boston College today in a series that they've dominated. All these games since 2006 are relatively young series. 35-10 the overall lead for Clemson. They are 18-5 here at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. Yeah, the uh, odd thing about it is that Boston College actually has more wins here than they do over the Tigers in Boston. <laughs> Tigers 10-2 so far this season in this facility where they've done very well overall. Officially opened in 1970, gone all over, undergone many renovations since then. When I first came here in 1978, there's a shot. Yeah, Jack Cunningham with a drive, right field. This one will be out of here, and we are tied. Jack Cunningham with the home run, and just like that, Boston College is on the board. Cunningham's second home run of the season is 10th RBI. Well, that was a shot. You do have to wonder if... From a Boston College standpoint, you know you're going against a pitcher on a pitch count, so he's not into wasted pitches, wants to get that first pitch strike, and so they're swinging at the first pitch. Just drilled that one to right center. Three rows up. And just like that, we are tied at one. Brings up Luke Gold, the second baseman. Cunningham had, last year had nine home runs on the season which was the most by a Boston College player since 2015. Strider working quickly. Misses right there, it's one and one. Gold on the season batting 240. He is one for seven in this series. He scored a couple of times. We know Boston College can put some runs on the board. That's why really Bonnie's got to feel great about his pitching right now. You think Boston College comes in averaging better than seven runs a game, and they've held them to eight in the first two games. Yeah, they were hitting 326 before, prior to the series. Foul ball will be out of play. Davis Sharp gives it a quick look. And you mentioned the renovations they've done here. It's I can kind of recognize some, if you stand above the Clemson dugout, you can tell a little bit of the way it used to look like, but man, what a huge change that has happened here over the years. And not all at once, it's just been really gradual. Of course, obviously that, that wonderful baseball office building and facility there. The, uh, when I came in 78, the press box was down the right field line beyond the dugout. And so, you know, Ran the scoreboard out of there. Mr. Bradley would score the game. And, you know, sometimes when we were short of students, <laughs> Mr. B would do the PA, do the scoreboard, and be the official score all at the same time. That's why he's a legend, That's Hall right. of Famer. You got it. He's uh, 
strike three. Yep. Mr. B's in the football stadium on the facade in the ring of honor, but uh, baseball, quite frankly, was his favorite sport. Third strikeout for Strider. Gold goes down. That's the first out of the inning. That'll bring up Ramon Jimenez, the designated hitter. Sophomore is had a good day yesterday. This is his sixth start of the season. 250 is his average coming in. Had a big hit yesterday as part of that Boston College rally. They came from 4 nothing down to tie the game, only to see the Tigers go on a run and win it 12 to 5. Pretty good control for Strider so far. 26 pitches, 20 of them for strikes. Takes a cut and misses, and it's one and two. You mentioned that uh, the great Bob Bradley in the football stadium, he's got a typewriter, an old-style typewriter. That's right. As yes. his That's his icon. Running, yeah. As his icon. And swing and a miss. Another strikeout, second of the inning, back-to-back. Yeah, Mr. B was uh, excited when they brought him an electric typewriter for the first time. <laughs> I'm just wondering how many young people look up and see that symbol so and say, what, what is that? that? <laughs> and their folks will say, go to the Google. Peter Burns, the catcher, comes up with two down. And as we mentioned, Burns has had an interesting series, had a hitless three-strikeout night on Friday and then came back yesterday. Four for six now. In the series overall, fouls that one back. Two fourteen is his average. One one pitch. Missed on the inside. Two and one. Fouled it away. That'll make it a 2 2 count. Strider about halfway through right now is the kind of pitch count you're looking at for him. And Monty said he'd like to get him to round six. Oh. It was a ground ball, and man, that found the way to go. And it's he's going to try for two. And Burns will come up with a standing two out double. That was a wee Willie Keeler double down the left field line. He hit him where they ain't. Right down the yeah. line. Yeah. He was, it looked like he was just trying to stay alive and foul it off off the 2 2 pitch and ends up with a double. Hawkins would have had to really be guarding the line. He would have to have been smothering the line. So let's see what the Tigers can do. This is the first runner in scoring position for Boston College, and Clemson pitching on the season has been outstanding. First pitch to Dante Baldelli, the number nine hitter, the center fielder, is taken for a ball. Strider's pitch. There's a shot that's going to be towards center field. A diving attempt by Mikowski. He can't get it. A run will score, and coming in, standing up at second is Baldelli, and it's going to be back-to-back -back doubles for BC, and they take the lead. Well, a great diving attempt out there in center. Well, it was well struck. It was low over the plate. Baldelli must like, oh, just a yeah. tip of the glove. Maybe another six inches, and that could have been a top-ten play. Yeah, and it, no knock about uh, Gowski, but you know Teodosio is one of the best center fielders in the in the country, and he's injured. And I wonder if he might have been able to make that play. So with BC now with two runs across in the inning, it's the top of the order, and it's Sal Fralick who struck out swinging to lead the game off. But he comes in now with a once again a runner at second and two down. Three hits in the inning for Boston College. All extra bases. Yeah. Strider has a couple of strikeouts in the midst of that. 
pitch making it one and one. Fralick on the season is a 250 hitter with runners in scoring position and also the same number with two out. Fouled it away, or tipped it at least, one and two. Two across for the Eagles here in the second. They're trying to add to that. There's a fly ball right field. This drives Brewer back. He will have room. And the side is finally retired, but a three-hit inning for Boston College. Jack Cunningham's home run part of it, and the Eagles lead it 2-1. Boston College is doing a terrific tribute to uh, one of their former players, their former team captain, Pete Frates, this season as they are trying to strike out ALS. They've got a patch that's on the right side of their caps. They're also wearing a PF3 patch on each jersey. Frades, again, he was a former captain, uh, diagnosed with ALS in 2012. He was a huge fundraiser and advocate for your career and spreading awareness about that, including the Ice Bucket Challenge. He died this, this past December, and the Eagles are honoring him with that tribute throughout the season. Yeah, passed away at the age of uh, 34. Outstanding mm. player for Boston College. And he was the person who started the ice bucket challenge. Yep. Ground ball by James Parker to lead things off. Dempsey at short will field it, and there is one away. BC had a big overshift against Parker with uh, three infielders on the left side of second base. So with one down, that'll bring up Adam Hackenberg, the catcher. Hackenberg making his 15th start behind the plate today. 314 is his average on the season. Yep, he's boosted that average thanks to a 4 for 7 performance in the series so far. Of course, he came up big on Friday night knocking in a run to tie the game and then delivering the game winner in the eighth. Sheehan's pitch misses on the outside. It's one and one. Good look at Adam, who comes from a pretty good family as far as athletes go as he takes a cut and misses. His brother Christian was, a, I would say, a pretty fair quarterback at Penn State. Got a chance to play in the NFL. Ball and two strikes. That one's in the dirt, gets away. That'll make it two and two. Hackenberg with two hits in each of the first two games of the series. The only player for either team with uh, two hits in each game. Got 12 RBIs on the season. I believe he leads the Tigers in that category. There's a look at Peter Burns behind the plate, hit that home run, and Hackenberg, that's the second day in a row that he's been hit by a pitch. But yesterday he got nailed just below the left shoulder blade, and today it's right on the elbow. At least he's got that protection right there. I think that first replay we had shows it that it just clipped the top of that. So, Hackenberg will be at first with one away, and here's Bo Mikowski. Bo batting 167 on the season, but coming off a three-hit effort yesterday. Yeah, his best game of the season. First pitch by Sheehan misses. So look at Monty Lee. We'll be talking to him coming up a little later in our ball game. We'll hear from both coaches as a matter of fact. Sheehan misses again. It's 2-0.
course, Bo Mikowski, as I just mentioned, Adam Hackenberg's brother. Bo Mikowski's dad was a pretty good quarterback. Yes, he was, before Brent Favre. Yeah. In Green Bay. Don Mikowski had a great career at Virginia and had some great years with the Packers. Right As you mentioned before, somebody named Favre showed up. Of course, he played against the Tigers for the University of Virginia. 3-0 is the count. He's got his bubble gum ready. Takes the called strike, 3-1. And you know, what about blowing a bubble while you're waiting for a pitch? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just to prove everything he can do. To yeah. Play. Two things at the same time. Popped it up. And I'll make it a full count at three and two. 41 pitches for Sheehan so far. We're just in the second inning. Yeah. Of course, with uh, Spencer Strider on a pitch count, we expect to see Matt Clark follow him. Out of the Tiger bullpen, popped it up, but it's going to be out of play once again on the left side. Yeah, it's amazing how over the last 30 years, uh, feelings towards pitch counts have changed. I remember uh, there was Clemson played Wake Forest in an ACC tournament game in 1986, and a fellow named Gourlay for, I believe, Wake Forest threw 221 pitches against this and pitched 16 innings. <laughs> he draws the walk. So after a ground out by James Parker to start the inning, Tigers get a couple of what Monty would call free 90s. <laughs> and so with runners at first and second, the top of the order comes up with Dylan Brewer. Brewer got that double in the first that could have been a home run if not for the work of Baldelli to kind of block it back in. He had it in his glove and brought it back over the fence, held him to a double, and then he later scored on the Hawkins RBI single. Of course, Tim mentioned earlier that Brewer does not have the, at 216, a, and a typical leadoff batter kind of average, but he gets on base a lot with walks. Takes a called strike. You can see Brewer's reaction to that. Oh, one pitch. Takes it, it evens it up. That last pitch was uh, kind of a perfect pitch right in the corner. I remember in 1970, Ted Williams did a piece for Sports Illustrated in conjunction with this book on the science of hitting. Takes the first strike. Another one in that spot. So he had this graphic, and it was a box of the strike zone, and he had a ball with an average. Uh, for each area. In other words, the lower right-hand corner was 220. Higher on outside might have been 240, and right down the heart was like 400. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so based on that, of course, he felt nobody should ever hit worse than 220. <laughs> <laughs> Called strike on the inside, and that's the second out of the inning. All three of those pitches were in the 220 zone. It would have been tough to hit. Yeah. Sweet pitch there by Sheehan. Sheehan now with three strikeouts and with two away. And that brings up Elijah Henderson. Henderson struck out swinging his first time up. Hackenberg at second. Mikowski at first. So Sheehan's 48th pitch in two innings. But he's got the lead. This is outside. If Clemson feels good about getting into their bullpen. 
Boston College might be going to theirs a little bit early today. Unless that guy from the from the 80s from Wake Forest is suddenly <laughs> available, which I think is probably out of eligibility. <laughs> yes. 216 pitches? 221. 221, 221, yeah. 16 inning game. Yeah. And and uh, the reason I know it is Mr. Bradley in the scorebook wrote a note only through 221 pitches. Mm. Henderson winning, of course, he comes off the season high day and you can see right now Scott Klein. He's having a chat right now with the Boston College coach, Mike Gambino. Obviously, Scott Klein has no problem with his hearing. Big cut and misses. Two and one. I could just barely hear what he was saying. I said three things. Maybe three things is his limit. Yeah. Two balls and a strike. Takes that pitch. That makes it three and one. This would take a walk with Kier Meredith on deck, who's a killer with runners in scoring position. There's a drive. It's going to go past Morissette at third. Rounding is Hackenberg. Hackenberg ties the ball game. Clemson will go for the lead, and they will get it. An RBI double nicely done with two out by Henderson, and Clemson goes back ahead. Now, one of the reasons the Tigers were able to score two and uh, back, go all the way to second was the left fielder, Swazi, was way over towards center field, so he had a long way to run to get this ball out of the left field corner. Good shot right there of Henderson. He's feeling it, and the Tigers go back ahead by a count of three to two. And here's Kier Meredith, who comes up, and he's got a runner still in scoring position. Both teams with doubles in the second inning right down the line. Meredith walked the first time up to reach base safely for the 15th time this season, all 15 games for the Tigers so far. 415 is average on the year. He's hitting the corners this inning. He's given up a couple runs. Yeah. Got a lot of pitches to hit the corners. And as you've mentioned, a lot of pitches, period. There's a fly ball. Right center field, calling for it is Baldelli, and Baldelli will bring it in, but Clemson scores a couple of runs with only one hit. We will go to the third. It's 3-2 Tigers. Clemson's Spencer Strider with four strikeouts in his first trip through the Boston College order. Yeah, he's been effective. He's got three of them on one two counts, one on a two two count. As you can see, Strider's numbers through two, and we keep an eye on his pitch count. Right now, he's at 39 starting the third. And again, we're expecting him to be, depending on the situation, right around 60 might be his count for the day. He comes back out with Clemson having retaken the lead, three to two, and Brian Dempsey, the shortstop, will lead things off here for BC in the third. He grounded to short his first time up. Now he's going to face the meat of the order. These next these six, four guys all have high averages in combined, have an average of 397 coming into this game. And they are two for four with a home run so far today. Peter Burns with that home run so far for the Eagles. That gave them a two to one lead before the Tigers got two back. Cunningham. Cunningham hit the home. Cunningham hit the home. Excuse me. I'm thinking of Burns back yesterday. yesterday. Burns, yeah, Burns had the double. Excuse yeah, me. Burns had yeah. Double. You'd think I could remember a name like that. <laughs> <laughs> You'd think, you know. What's the guy's name? Oh, it's mine. He's, not your, he's only your long lost cousin. How can you forget? 
Oh, fly ball out of play. I'm blaming it on the time change. Yes. That's it. Yeah, it was the time change. I would have had that right otherwise. Yeah, glad you didn't have to uh, get up for your normal hours. Oh, the, yeah. The SBA would have lost another hour of sleep. Yeah, I got a, at least a day to recover from that. Dempsey fouls it off. It's two and two. I start going to bed now with the sun still out. Wow. Or at least some sunshine. 2-2 two, two count to Brian Dempsey. Fouled it back. How do you possibly adjust on the weekends? It's tricky. I uh, I get a little restless about 6 in the morning. If <laughs> I can sleep till 9, that's like anybody else sleeping till noon or yeah, 1. Yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't happen very often. Takes a cut nice. and strikes an out. Nicely done. Fifth strikeout for Strider. This looked like a changeup breaking ball. At, uh, just a perfect pitch. Would have been a strike if he hadn't swung at it. Pulling the string. Here's Cody Morissette. Does what he does against Clemson. Just making base hits. Now, Clemson once again has the shift on. They've got the three fielders between first and second. Moore set the first time up. He hit a shot just to the left from our view of second base. I don't know if Parker was set up normally, if he could have gotten it or not. I mean, he smoked that one pretty well. Popped him up. Out of play, two and one. We have five ranked second baseman in the nation, according to D1 Baseball, for the 2020 draft, I believe, or 21 draft. Yeah, he's terrific. And the terrific freshman year, yeah, was all fresh, ACC second team. Freshman All American yep. last year by three different publications. Takes that pitch for a called strike, three and two. We mentioned the. Fairfield series where Boston College really put up some huge numbers. One of those games he knocked in four. Four of his 10 RBI on the season. 3-2 pitch. Grounds it right side. Javis Sharp can't get it and it finds its way through past Henderson as well. And the base hit puts a eagle on base with one down. Seeing eye single on the right side. Moore set six of ten in the series against the Tigers. There's some Boston College basketball players didn't shoot free throws that well. <laughs> so that brings up Joe Swazi. He struck out looking to end the first. Give Moore set credit. I mean, you, you, they had the shift on. You had three guys there. Yeah. He still found the spot to get it through yeah, two of them. Absolutely. Pitch misses from Strider. Here's a good look at Swazi. Two and no count. Swazi came to Boston College as a walk on in 2017, and I think he's a co captain. Yeah. Great story. From walk on to one of the best, and I mentioned, you mentioned right, he is one of the co-captains as they keep an eye on Morissette at first. Morissette on the season is two for four in the stolen base category for the Eagles. This is going to be pitch 56. So. Swazi didn't have his best swing right there. There's a look at Matt Clark. He's getting ready to go, the left-hander. And this is by design, Matt Clark. Basically, Clemson has four weekend pitchers. The idea with Strider is that just because he's of his comeback from surgery, they, if you're going to pitch him, he has to start. Right. You can't think about putting him in relief. I mean, it's got to be a structured setup, structured, structured sitting, uh, pitching situation. 
Yep, this is going to be his last batter, I'm sure. And Adam Hackenberg maybe heading out there just to buy Clark an extra few warm-up pitches. And I believe that's Andrew C. coming out as well from the Tiger dugout. Clark was a weekend starter last year, so. Yeah, he won nine games last year. Yeah. So you're almost facing two starters right now for the Tigers on a Sunday. Yeah, Clark pitched the fifth, sixth, and seventh against South Carolina last Sunday. Only gave up one hit, no runs. That discussion continues, and now Scott Klein will make his way about halfway out. Here's a good look at Andrew C., the veteran pitching coach for the Tigers in his fifth season. Monty would love to see the Tigers turn a double play here. Clemson's only had four double plays here in the first 14 games. Strider with a runner at first. Makes a throw over to Davis Sharp. Strider's around five hits so far. He struck out five, no walks at this point. Foul tipped it, three and two. Second straight batter. He's gone three and two on after not going through three and two at all prior to that. Missed on the outside, that's a walk, and that'll put runners at first and second. Man, I gotta believe Monty's gonna come out. And here comes Monty Lee. Just as you said, he was hoping to get him to 60 pitches and he gets him to 59. So Matt Clark will be entering the game and he'll come in a bit of a stressful situation for the Tigers with a couple of runners on. Here is Matt, we'll check his numbers and more when we return to Doug Kingsmore Stadium. The new pitcher for the Tigers, the left-hander Matt Clark. 2-0 his record on the season. This will be his fourth appearance, an ERA of 1.80. He's pitched 10 innings so far, allowed two earned runs on seven hits. How's this for a strikeout-to-walk ratio? 12 strikeouts, just one walk so far on the season. Yeah, pretty strong for, uh, for Matt Clark. He pitched against Boston College uh, last year. And got a win. He pitched uh, five and two-thirds innings as a starter back on March 23rd. Gave up seven hits, four runs, three earned, struck out one. And he did pitch against them as a freshman. Also, he pitched an inning, and uh, there were no stats in that game. Of course, Matt Clark was a third-team All-ACC selection a year ago. So, I mean, you are talking a quality weekend picture, but the way they're setting things up to get uh, this season started. They'll go with Strider, and I know Monty wanted to get to the fourth with him potentially. He winds up getting to a point where there's one out here in the third. But Matt Clark is certainly capable of, you know, giving you four. Yeah. He's here in the middle of the game. Well, he comes into a situation with runners at first and second. Morissette and... Swazi and Jack Cunningham is coming up, and Cunningham had that solo home run to lead off the second. Try to recall if it was either the first or second pitch first of the inning. Pitch. First pitch of the first inning. First pitch. And uh, he smoked it. Hit that home run to right center field, about three rows up. And so here we go with Clark facing Cunningham. And he's their best home run hitter. Last year to match the number on his back. Good look at Jack, the first baseman. First pitch from Matt Clark. Takes right down the middle for a strike. Him is nine for 28 in his career against the Tigers. 
that is awfully good. Yeah, it's pretty good. About 320. Batting better than 400 with runners in scoring position, and that's what he's got right here with one down. Going. Runners going. The throw from Hackenberg does not get there in time, so both runners advance, and now you got runners at second and third. Nicely done by BC. It was kind of a tough pitch to handle low and outside. He got in there. Yep. Just nice. the 11th steal, well now 12 steals and 22 attempts against the, uh, well against Hackenberg because he's got every game. Meanwhile, back at the plate, ball makes it one and two. Luke Gold is on deck for the Eagles. Back and forth game here at Doug Kingsmore. Tigers jumped out 1-0, fell behind 2-1. Clemson came back with two to go up 3-2. Two and two is the count now. Here's the pitch. This is low. I think there's a few umpires wearing orange in the stands that would disagree. Mm -hmm. that was a bit low. Yep. Takes that ball, makes it a full count at three and two. Fouls it out of the play to the left side. Clark went nine and three last year. He started out seven and zero oh in his first eight appearances. Had uh, two wins against Louisville last year, including one in the ACC tournament, which he went eight innings and gave up just one hit and one run. Wow. Junior out of Hilton Head Island. Ground ball, bound off the right side. I always wonder what it would be to grow up in, from a place like Hilton Head Island that everybody comes to, and yeah. you're already there. Yeah, where do you go on vacation? I don't know. Any place would be a letdown, you'd I think. I know. It's, it's kind of like living in Bloomington, Indiana. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's or the South exact Bend. same thing. <laughs> yeah, especially in January and February. Yeah. Got him. Yeah, a big strikeout there. Cunningham goes down looking. Second out of the inning. A big out for Matt Clark. Nice lefty-lefty matchup. What's one thing that Monty likes about this uh, situation with Strider and Clark? You go from right-hander to left-hander. That was a key strikeout. Yeah, that brings up Luke Gold now, who struck out his first time up. Runners at second and third, but there's now two out. Luke Gold, the number six batter in the order. There's a ground ball, but it's going to be fouled off the left side. Gold is a 300 hitter with runners in scoring position. <laughs> oh, one pitch. Takes it one and one. Yep, outside. Yep. Hackenberg with the late frame to no avail. One one pitch from Clark. There's a shot. It's going to be a base hit. 
right field in front of Dylan Brewer. One run will score. A play to the plate, not in time. It is a two-run single for Luke Gold, who comes up big, and Boston College goes back in front. Now that we go back and forth, back and forth, like watching an ACC basketball yeah. game. Nice uh, job going with the pitch by Gold. <laughs> you said hits over 300 with runners in scoring position. He was a 235 hitter for the season. That's... Must be under 200 when nobody's in yeah. position, but uh, he comes through in the clutch. That's big for gold. As he gives BC the lead again, gives him 11 RBI on the season. So here's Ramon Jimenez with a runner at first. He struck out swinging back in the second. Boston College now with six hits for those four runs. Tigers have three runs on three hits. Book on Strider. Means he will have given up four earned runs. And the RA is going to rise from 1.86. Saw that pitch miss on the outside. One and one. Pitch taken for a strike. Takes that pitch that makes it two and two. Got a close game going, and uh, these two programs have played in two of the five longest NCAA baseball games in history. Boston College played a 25-inning game with Texas in 2009. Texas outside, which is the longest game tournament or not tournament in the history of college baseball. Wow. Tigers played a 19-inning game at Beehive Stadium in New Britain, Connecticut against Fordham in 1988, a game I broadcast with Mark Packer. Really? Wow. Pitch is low. Ball four. So once again, there's two aboard as Jimenez will get the walk, and that brings up Peter Burns. Burns doubled the first time up, but now he comes up with his team in front and runners at first and second. Whatever happened to Mark Packer? Did he ever, he ever go anywhere? Um... Yeah, I think so. He's gotten some business deals with his father, and I think he does a little radio. Yeah. But uh, that game was actually delayed a day um, because the they didn't have a tarp at the stadium. <laughs> There's a fly ball center field. Mikowski is going to be there, and the inning is finally over. But Boston College has gone back in front, and we will talk to the Eagles head coach, Mike Gambino, when we return. Fred Cunningham, Tim Beret with you. We're joined by Boston College coach, Mike Gambino. Coach, I know that you, you liked what you saw in that last uh, half inning. Luke Gold does not have the overall great average right now, but his numbers are excellent with runners in scoring position, and he came through. Yeah, that was a good swing on a pretty good pitch, and we think he's um, going to be a really special bat here. Um, and, you know, he's a freshman. He's learning how to compete at this level every day and see these types of arms every day. Um, and that was a, a really good bat in a big spot. Coach, you really got to be pleased with your number two through five hitters in the order. That's <clears throat> got to be one of the most potent areas of a lineup, uh, certainly in the ACC. Yeah, we believe so. We believe we have a good lineup top to bottom. And, uh, you know, when you start off with Sal, and, and uh, he's been a little bit cold this weekend, but that kid's one of the best players in the country. And then you talked about the two through five, and then with Luke Gold there at six. And then you're starting to see Dante and Bernsey and those guys, and Ramon um, at the bottom get going a little bit. So, yeah, we, we feel good about our lineup, and we think we can swing with anybody. All right, Mike Gambino, thanks so much for being with us today. Thanks good for having to me, guys. Appreciate it. All right. Good time to get a him on the interview with his team going back up right before that by a count of four to three. So Briar Hawkins will lead things off for the Tigers here. 
And again, we're just kind of going up and down the court right now in this game. <laughs> yes, we are. This feels like it. Just trading threes. Yeah. Boston College leading it now 4-3. to three. Briar Hawkins knocked in a run in the first, his first trip to the plate. And there's a base hit, his second hit of the day, and the Tigers get the leadoff man aboard. Boy, Fred, his uh, timing on that one was outstanding. He just got right out in front of it and just tomahawked it. Yeah. He's now four for six in the series. That brings up Davis Sharp. Davis struck out looking in the first. Of course, Sharp is the typical Saturday starter for the Tigers. He did not figure in yesterday's decision after playing on Friday night. And we've seen him at DH. We've seen him at first base. Took no BP yesterday. They wanted him just to focus on, on pitching yesterday. Yes, he's the modern era Jimmy Key. Yeah. Jimmy Key pitched, DH, played first base for the Tigers. He's the only player in Clemson baseball history to make all ACC at two different positions in the same year. Went on to have a great year in the bigs, or great he career, I should yeah. say. Yeah, I can remember interviewing him after uh, the Toronto Blue Jays World Series victory against the Atlanta Braves. Right, and uh, then he had a clinching victory for the Yankees. Strike three. Yeah, called strike. Second time that Davis has struck out looking, and there's one away. Nice hook. A little low. You got the call. Yeah, Jimmy Key was the only player in baseball to have two World Championship clinching victories in the decade of the 1990s. So that brings up Chad Ferry coming off a day yesterday where he started hitless for the season and wound up with a career-high three hits. It's a player I know that Monty Lee really likes. He was recruited out of Greenwood. Struggled his freshman season. He was 0 for his first 24. Didn't get his first hit until May. Then was 0 for 17 until yesterday. And again, his first hit of the season was that solo home run, and he added two more before the day was done. His grandfather played six years in the major leagues with the Dodgers and the Expos. His uncle Burke Ferry played for the Tigers from 85 to 88. Fouled it back. Should also mention on Friday night, uh, he had a sack fly that was, if you can crush a sack fly, apparently that's what, what it was. A huge shot that could have gone for extra bases if it had dropped. Mm -hmm. Still wound up bringing home a run in a one-run game, so obviously a huge at bat. Takes that 1-1 one, one pitch for a strike. That'll make it 1-2. and two. James Parker is on deck. Emmett Sheehan. Over 60 pitches now as he works in the bottom of the third. Gets the strikeout, yeah. Second strikeout of the inning, back to back. And there's two down. Gives him five strikeouts now. Is that Parker? Rounded out to short in the second. He's now three for 10 in the series. Father Tim Parker was an outstanding pitcher for the Tigers from 87 to 90. Throw back over to first as they keep an eye on Hawkins. No stolen base attempts on the season so far. Takes that pitch for a called strike. Right in there, 
perfect pitch. He's really doing a good job keeping the ball low in the strike zone. Popped it up. Right side underneath is Jack Cunningham, the first baseman. He will bring it in, so the Tigers get a leadoff single, but they can't get anything across. We will talk to Coach Monty Lee when we return. BC leads Clemson 4-3 after three. Fred Cunningham and Tim Bray were joined by Clemson coach Monty Lee. Coach, I know that Briar Hawkins is just, the, the ball must look like a beach ball right now. He's got a couple of hits already on the day. Yeah, he's swinging the bat really well for us right now, and that's why he's sitting in the, in the middle of the order. So, uh, you know, glad to see Briar, um, you know, catching fire here. We need him to be good for us. He's, he's one of our older guys, and he's just a sophomore, and, uh, but he's uh, swinging the bat well right now. No, you're glad to get uh, Matt Clark on and mm. glad to have a pitcher of his quality to be able to come into yep. this situation. Yeah, you know, now he, he gets to start with a with a, a clean inning and, uh, you know, hopefully he'll settle in and do what Matt does and keep us in this ball game. Boston College is swinging the bat really well right now. Uh, so, uh, you know, he needs to keep us in this game and give our offense a chance. We're swinging the bat well ourselves. So, you know, hopefully Matt can uh, throw up a couple zeros for us and, and we can find a way to get a little more offensive momentum here. Uh, as we get into the middle innings and uh, see what happens. All right, Coach Monty Lee, thank you for spending yep. a couple of moments with us. Yep, sure. Thanks, guys. All right. So Monty Lee has his team one-third of the way through, trailing this one four to three. You just have a feeling like it's going to take ten runs to win this game. It, it really is because we've had six half innings of it so far, and we've had – Two runs scored in three of those six. Nothing close to a one, two, three inning. No. Team. So Dante Baldelli, number nine hitter, the center fielder, will lead things off against Matt Clark here in the top of the fourth. And he showed bunt, but he takes the strike call. Baldelli had an RBI double in the second. Pitch misses low. It's one and one. Matt Clark working quickly. There's a fly ball. Left field chases Ferry back to the Tiger Paw, but he brings it in. There's one away. I bring up the top of the order, Sal Fralick. He's 0 for 2. Struck out swinging in the first and end of the second with a fly ball to right field. Freilich, a sophomore out of Lexington, Massachusetts. He's another really good young player for BC. He was all a freshman last year in the ACC, made the second team. Even after missing the last 19 games with a leg injury. Yeah, he made some freshman All-American teams last year, too. So that's a couple of good guys to have in your lineup between Freilich and Morissette in the same recruiting class. Two balls and no strikes. Takes the strike call. Pitch low in the zone by Clark. It's in that 220 area, according to Ted Williams. <laughs> Same spot. Two two pitch. Got him swinging. And there's one down. The ball really broke away from him and really just kind of. Trying to foul it off to stay alive. So there's two down. Here's Brian Dempsey, the shortstop. Grounded out to short. Struck out swinging to lead off the third. Clark's now got two strikeouts on the afternoon.
lot of action so far in this one. Seven combined runs already. Takes the 1 0 pitch. It's 2 0. There's a shot that's going to go knocked down by Henderson. Comes up throwing. And how about that, Tim? A 1 2 3 inning. A nice end to it with a great play by Henderson. We go to the bottom of the fourth. 4 3, Boston College. Emmett Sheehan has been impressive for Boston College. He's got five strikeouts in this game through the first three innings against the Tigers. He has allowed three runs so far, but right now his team has a 4-3 to three lead as we play in the bottom half of the fourth inning. As Adam Hackenberg leading things off for the Tigers. Pitch is taken for a strike. Hackenberg reached... In the second, he got hit by a pitch and later scored on the RBI double by Elijah Henderson. Swings and misses at that one. It's one and two. Cajun Cafe delivering. They are the best. Look at that. Three boxes? There's only two of us. Oh. Tim, if you don't want to talk too much for the next inning, yeah. I'll I'll we'll understand completely. <laughs> that pitch is high up around the wrists, two and two. Cajun Cafe located right there in right field for your next trip to Doug Kingsmore Stadium. We always like it on a day like this when the wind's kind of blowing in off Hartwell, so we think they can at least blow the smoke our, yes. our direction. Roma. Morissette will handle the ground ball by Hackenberg, makes the throw over to Jack Cunningham, and there is one down. Hopper tried to pull an outside pitch. Just in a good spot, handled it on the one hop. And there's one down. Bo Mikowski hitting number nine of the order. Clemson got something going in the second. They had one down and then Hackenberg was hit by a pitch. Mikowski walked and they eventually came in on that Henderson two run RBI double and that gave Clemson the lead back but now they've fallen behind by a count of four to three. Ball and a strike. Bow at 167 on the season but comes off an excellent Saturday. Couldn't hold that one back as Third base umpire makes the call, and it's a ball and two strikes. Yep, went around. Good call. Pitch is low, and I'll make it two and two. Dylan Brewer in the top of the Clemson order is on deck. play, fouled it off to the left side. Another beautiful day here at Clemson and of course softball playing just beyond the outfield fence of that brand new stadium. Off to a great start this season. Three and two full count. Kowski's father played in the NFL from 87 to 96. 1989, he led the NFL in completions, attempts, and yards. He's able to walk. So it's a one-out walk for Mikowski. He's aboard for the second time. Gets the Tigers to the top of the order. So that brings up Dylan Brewer, who's got a hit that double that could have been a home run if not for the great play by Baldelli in center. That was in the first. He struck out looking in the second. Perfect game 
calling him a top 10 college prospect for the 2022 draft, if you like to look that far ahead. Nothing like looking two drafts ahead. With the ahead. exception of predicting Trevor Lawrence in the draft, I, I don't know, that's a little early. <laughs> you might be right. <clears throat> Takes a swing and a miss. Went up on 80 pitches now for Emmett Sheehan. Yeah, we're only in the fourth inning. But seven innings in his last appearance and threw just 89 pitches. No activity right now in the Eagles bullpen. Pitch is taken high. You know, I mentioned softball playing right now. It's, it's fun to come here now on a day when you've got there's been some Saturdays. I know last Sunday there was a triple header happening all at the same time. You had softball over there. Right. South Carolina Clemson here. Baseball. And with the uh, women's uh, basketball game, uh, it was senior day against uh, Georgia Tech. Yeah. And then there was a, a previous Saturday baseball here, softball across the way, and you were working. I was here for baseball, and you were doing Louisville Clemson basketball. basketball. And it turned out to be another huge home court victory yes. for the Tigers. Yep. It's almost like you come here and it's a festival for a couple of those games. <laughs> yes. A lot of activity on the left side. Try to find a parking <clears throat> space. And if you know Dabo, you can get into football. <laughs> Make it a. Do you know him? I know him, yes. <laughs> he lets me in now and then. <laughs> a ball and a strike to Dylan Brewer. And they'll continue to keep an eye on Mikowski at first. He has not attempted a stolen base this season. Or a plane that's setting a delay. Maybe that's Dabo flying back from a recruiting <laughs> trip. No, Dabo was here this weekend. We had a big uh, oh, yeah. reunion of all of his former players. Right, I forgot that about big. that. Players dating back to what, 2008? Yes. There's the plane. Yeah. The plane. Air Dabo. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, he'd. You win a couple of national championships. You fly only on jets. <laughs> <laughs> Call the Lear. Coach wants to go recruit. I, I love watching also what he does when he kind of does his sports tours. Is it like during spring break of um, of uh, well, spring usually, practice uh, or afterwards? No, it's after spring after, practice. After spring practice. <clears throat> Last year was in May. Of course, he was the reigning king of the world oh, after yeah. winning the national championship. But he was sending me pictures from basket, NBA basketball games, Major League Baseball games. Did he take a picture with Drake with he the Raptors? He did, and he sent it to me, and I was embarrassed to say. <clears throat> I didn't know who it was. I thought it was a point guard for one of the teams. <laughs> so I went online and pulled up the rosters because I didn't recognize him. I said, which guard is that? And he was in Toronto. Oh, <laughs> my. Like, <laughs> he got a big kick out of that. Yeah. You needed to find a, a hip, uh, you know, Generation yeah, X or whatever. Yeah. yeah. There's a shot. Base hit right side. Mikowski makes the turn at second. Hesitated for a moment, but he will come in standing up at third. It is a base hit for Brewer. And the Tigers have runners at the corners with one out. Brewer really having a good day. It was a nice 2-1 pitch. He got the replay, see where that was. Yeah, it was out over the plate. He kind of pulled it a little bit. Didn't really go with the pitch, but he got around on it. And uh, sets up a first and third, second hit of the game. So here's Elijah Henderson, and he's got a couple of runs knocked in. I was that double back in the second. Struck out the first time up in the first. And you're going to get some activity beginning in the Boston College bullpen. Henderson on the season. He's a 438 hitter with runners in scoring position. He's got the tying run in Mikowski at third. One of the 
fun things to play with Clemson this year is where's Elijah? Because you know he's going to be in the lineup. It's just where he's been in. He plays some second, some right, some left. He was in right yesterday, and he's the playing at second base this afternoon. Throw over to check Brewer at first. He is three for three on the season in the stolen base category. Yeah, kind of a tall, lean guy. Kind of reminds me of David Miller, who played here oh, wow. 25 years ago. Yeah. Left-handed hitter. Got the same kind of build. Holds off that one. David, great player at Clemson from 93 to 95. I think he's in coaching now. At a school. Ball on a strike as he makes the throw over to first. Four three hour score, but the Tigers are threatening here in the fourth. Runner going, swing and a miss. There's going to be the throw to second. It's not going to be in time. Stolen base number four on the season for Dylan Brewer. They're going to call the batter out, though. Yeah, well, they're going to say that he uh, interfered with the catcher's ability to throw down. Yeah. Mm. Monty Lee That's is making call. his case to Scott Klein. Big call because that wipes out that stolen base, and Brewer goes back to first. Take a look at it. Well, I don't know about that. His momentum carries him yeah. out of the batter's box. He was out of the batter's box. He did make contact with the catcher. As he was completing his throw, but that's the call, so. That's the second out of the inning, which is an even bigger situation. That brings up Kier Meredith. Walked in the first and flew out in the second. Tigers have the tying run at third, but there's now two out. Popped him up. Could be some trouble. Swazi coming in, runs a long way and makes the grab, and that will retire the side. So a couple of big outs for Emmett Sheehan to end the fourth. BC up on Clemson. It's 4-3. Top of the fifth, Boston College leading Clemson 4-3. We're we'll going to take another look and slow it down for you for this batter interference call. This looked like a stolen base, but they're going to call Elijah Henderson. He steps Kind of falls out of the box, puts his foot on home plate. Still has the bat in his arm as Burns was trying to make the throw to second to try to take care of Dylan Brewer on the stolen base attempt. Yeah, there was contact. He stepped out of the box, even stepped on the plate. Although I don't think that stepping on the plate makes all the much difference as he was out of the box. Right. And he made contact. And that turned out to be a pretty big out. It was the second out of the inning. And Pierre Meredith's fly ball out, and Boston College got out of the inning with no damage done. So we start the fifth inning, BC up four to three on the Clemson Tigers. Boston College, six hits on the day, five for Clemson. And here's Cody Morissette to lead things off. He's already got a couple of hits in this game to go along with a stolen base. His average now up to 442 on the season. And, of course, he is one of the outstanding shortstops, not only in the ACC, but in the country. Matt Clark in relief for the Tigers. There's a fly ball left field chasing after it hard, and it's going to drop for a base hit. Ferry could not get there, and it's a stand-up leadoff double for Morissette. It's his third hit of the day. He has been outstanding the entire series. That makes him seven for 11. Wow. You can see Ferry just chasing after it. That just found a good spot. Right down that left field line. Just kept curving away from him. So the leadoff man aboard for BC, that brings up Joe Swazi, who's 0 for 1, walked and stole a base the last time up. 
Also scored a run as part of that two-run third inning for Boston College that has them right now with that one-run lead. BC trying to get out of here with at least a one win in the series. There's a ground ball. It'll be handled by Hawkins. The throw across. Can't get that uh, runner there. And now you got runners at the corners. Could not turn around and make a tag or a play on the lead runner. So now you've got runners at first and third. There's nobody out. And here's Jack Cunningham. I ruled that a hit. I could be ruled a fielder's choice. That's what I would think. <coughs> but anyway. Officially eighth hit for Boston College. Cunningham has a home run and a strikeout. Now I take that back. The scoreboard did go from seven to eight. But they had, didn't they have seven hits going into the inning and then the double would have made eight. I think the scoreboard was just late putting the last hit up for the previous batter. What yeah, we, let's, let's. What do we have? They're calling it a single. They're calling it a single? Yeah. Two hits in the third. Cunningham at 396. He's knocked in 10 on the season. Strike call, two and one. He's batting 417 with runners in scoring position, and he's got the a runner at third with nobody out. Clark's pitch misses, three and one. Does everybody on this BC team have a higher batting average with runners in scoring position? It, it seems like overall, it, yeah. It seems like every one of them does. Man. Walks him, so now it's the bases are loaded. Nobody out here in the top of the fifth, and here comes Luke Gold, and the last time he was up, he had a two-run single that put BC ahead four to three. As a matter of fact, Luke Gold, you, did, you were asking, he hits 83 points higher with running his scoring yeah, position than he yeah. does for his average on the season. Yeah. Bases loaded for Matt Clark to try to get out of this. This is what you call some stress pitching. There's a fly ball. It's going to go to Ferry. That's going to be good enough to bring the run in. And it's now a 5-3 to three lead. He was close to leaving early, but Tigers already appealed over there. Safe sign was given. Morissette scores his second run of the game. Yep, he, uh, close. It was close. Yeah. Third RBI of the game for Gold. So that brings up Ramon Jimenez. 0 for 1, strikeout, walked the last time up. So one run is in. There's now one out. And you got runners at first and second, Cunningham and Swazi. Swazi at second. Takes a called strike. Take a look at it. Came in from first base nicely. Clark turns around, takes a quick look at Swazi at second, and now we'll set again. Right. 
There's a ground ball. It's going to get past Hawkins at third. They will send the runner in. Throw will be cut off. RBI single for Jimenez, and it's now a 6-3 lead for Boston College. Well, the men has got around on an inside bad ball. That was a Manny Sanguian hit. <laughs> that ball was low and inside out of the strike zone, and he just golfed it down there. And give credit to the bottom third of the order for Boston College. We talked about the guys who hit two through five. Well, the bottom third of the order is now three for six. Mm. I mean, they've got hitters everywhere, but... That lower part of the order has been big. Yeah. As you can see, a couple of Tigers warming up in the bullpen, and Andrew C is going to come out and maybe buy a little time right now. Right now, Nick Clayton is warming up, but we're going to see Jeffrey Gilbert. He's going to get the call. We're going to check Gilbert's numbers when we return. 6-3, Boston College. We're in the... Third pitcher of the day for the Tigers is Jeffrey Gilbert. 1-0 is his record on the season. An even 1.00 ERA, making his seventh appearance. He's pitched nine innings. Allowed a run on four hits, 12 strikeouts to just six walks, and teams hitting just 129 against him. And this is his second appearance in the series. He pitched two innings on Friday night in Clemson's 5-3 Victory and release of Sam Weatherly. Gave up one hit, struck out one, walked one. Didn't give up any runs. Faced eight batters in the game. The middle relief uh, before Carson Spires came in. Before that, he pitched the Friday night game in the South Carolina series. Again in relief of Weatherly and gave up the only hit of the game that South Carolina had. It oh, yeah. was a home run, but other than that, he did very well. Well, he comes into a situation here with the Tigers trailing 6-3 in the fifth. Two runs are already in for Boston College. And there's just one out. Peter Burns will be coming up to face Gilbert, who is a Mr. South, or Mr. Baseball in South Carolina, six-foot freshman out of Charleston. Third pitcher of the day for Clemson. We well, still have a feeling the Tigers are going to get some runs. Yeah. Kind of have a feeling of a an Oklahoma football offensive coordinator <laughs> talking to the defensive coordinator. Just slow him down a just, couple of times, <laughs> and we can get we can come back. Just keep him in range. A couple runners aboard. Jimenez is at first off that RBI single. Cunningham is at second, and there's one out, and here comes Peter Burns, and Burns one for two on the afternoon, doubled in the second. He had a home run in yesterday's game. Yeah. Only home run of the series for the Eagles prior to today, <clears throat> and uh, Fred Cunningham's older brother, hit, uh, younger brother, hit home <laughs> run, Jack Cunningham. He better be a lot older. <laughs> I, I guess theoretically he could be my grandson, but I don't even want to think about that. Oh, six to three is the count. Boston College leading this one. First pitch from Gilbert. Well, he stayed with another lefty. There's a bunt attempt. Fouled off, left side. 0-1. The Eagles have nine, no, excuse me, six sacrifice hits this year. The Tigers have four. And Burns has seen things turn around. He had he was 0 for 3 Friday night with three strikeouts. Of course, if you see Sam Weatherly and yeah. Gilbert, that's going to happen to a lot of folks. But then he's come back with two big days back to back. Whether the conditions were kind of brutal on Friday. Yeah. It's so funny because brutal weather conditions. I think only Weatherly gave a one earned run. If I'm, not, but he still had ten strikeouts. Yeah. And you're almost like, wow, he wasn't as sharp tonight. It's like, yeah. no, he he pitched yeah. really well again. Pretty well. 
That's what happens, the old expectations game. There's a fly ball, but it's chasing after it is Hawkins, but it's going to go way up into the seats on the left side. Sam Weatherly has 43 strikeouts in 22 and two-thirds innings. Goodness. What was his count against South Carolina in that? It was 14? It was a huge number. Huge number, yeah. Yeah, it was a huge number in about six or seven, so I think six and Can't look it up. I think less than seven innings. A ball and two strikes, though, is the situation right now. Burns with a ground ball. Tigers will try to turn two. They get one, and they get the second. Nicely done to get out of the image inning, but still a couple of runs across for Boston College. They extend the lead. It is six to three. We head to the bottom of the fifth. Did Henderson and company keep the Tigers in the game? We'll Another nice crowd at Clemson on this Sunday afternoon. Tigers averaging better than 4,300 fans per game. Of course, once again, ranking them in the top 10 in the country. This is a baseball rabid fan base. And of course, across the South in the state of South Carolina. And of course, you'll see those numbers start to go up. Of course, we had the, the time change last night. So starting with the Presbyterian game on Tuesday, those midweek games will go from Four o'clock first pitches to six o'clock. Try to get take advantage of hopefully the weather getting a little bit warmer and maybe get a few folks getting off work to come over and check out the Tigers. I think we're doing that game on uh, on Tuesday. Yes, uh, the Tigers were ninth in the country in attendance last year, averaging forty-seven to thirty-five for thirty home dates. So and Clemson pretty regularly in the top ten in baseball attendance. And it, the top 10 in football attendance over the last few uh, years. In fact, the football program is ranked in the top 20 in uh, attendance every year since 1983. Ooh, that's quite a run. Speaking of runs, here's Briar Hawkins leading things off for the Tigers in the fifth. He's two for two on the day. Knocked in a run in the first. Average up to 289 now. And he's going to be three for three. Dempsey didn't have much of a chance at that one. It's a leadoff single, and there's his family cheering that one on. Hawkins did a good job going with the pitch today. He's got a single to right center, and one to left center, and that one to left. I bring up Davis Sharp. He's 0 for 2 on the day. He struck out looking both times. And he's 0 for 6 in the series, so he's due. Emmett Sheehan has gone the distance. There is that activity in the BC bullpen. But he's coming up on pitch number 89, and that pitch is missed on the inside. You're talking about guys who could pitch and hit in Clemson history. I still remember, as you take a look right there, that is uh, Joey Walsh warming up right now for Boston College. Mike Milchin. Now, he wasn't really a starting pitcher. He was more of just a short reliever. Reliever, reliever yeah. I can remember the uh, the old Greenville Braves Stadium in first game of the ACC tournament. He had played in right field all day, and Bill Wilhelm brought him in to pitch the ninth, and he struck out the side after spending eight innings in the field to beat Maryland in an opening game. And yep. He also played a lot of first base. Close down the line. Mounted down the left side. You're on it. Nobody better. I can remember Nobody better. Here we go. going down to do a TV interview with a lot of the reporters. Asked Coach Wilhelm. As you can see the foul ball there. His um, his assessment of Milton's effort. And let's just say we had to ask him a second time because he gave a very descriptive answer that was not really quality. That you, it was it was we got what he I was saying. I remember well. I was there. Yes. And it was a great answer. It was not one we could use on television, no, but it was he, right. he he put it extremely well. As Sharp puts it back, and we won't share it here. Don't want the guy, the guys right now on audio. Bob on audio, don't worry about it. Not going to need to hit the kill switch. Mike Milchin went on to play in the major leagues. He played for Minnesota and Baltimore in 1996. Had a three and one record that year, and um, he's gone on to become an agent. Really? Yeah. Wow. Well done. He was a great player in college, that's for sure. Good. 
I don't know if he represented him, but I know he's very good friends with Jamie Moyer. If he did, that would have probably made him his longtime agent because Jamie Moyer <laughs> pitched for a long time. Jamie he's, Moyer he's, not, was, he's still not pitching, is he? No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> he's by pitching. Started when Mike Milton was in college. Oh, that's true. There's a base hit for Sharp, his first of the day. Hawkins will hold up at second, but the Tigers have something going in the fifth back-to-back -back singles. Pitch out right in the strike zone and Sharp went with it perfectly. Yeah. I must say, I have not seen a left fielder play closer to center field than uh, for most batters in Swayze. Yeah. Now, he's he, the last two right hand hitters, he's been way over. I mean, he's been on the other side of the Tiger Paw. Mm hmm. Now we have Ferry coming up, a left-hand hitter. We'll see where he plays. And we got the slow walk out to the hill. As you can see, she had it 94 pitches on the day. And this might just be to buy a couple of extra moments. And again, here's what uh, Tim's talking about. Yeah, you can see it right there. Look yeah. at the... You can see number 14, the Khalil Green's number. That just shows you right where he was standing to the center field side of the Tiger Paw. When Clemson scored its last run, that's one of the reasons they were able to get uh, two runs on one of those hits because uh, he was playing so far right towards center. I think it was Hackenberg hit it down the line. And they are going to make a pitching change. We will check out the new Eagles pitcher when we come back. Boston College leading Clemson 6-3. The second pitcher of the day for Boston College, number 43, Joey Walsh, making his seventh appearance. He's got an 0-2 record on the 2020 season, a 3.31 ERA. He's worked 16 in a third innings. He's given up six runs that are earned, 10 overall, but six that are earned on 13 hits, 7 strikeouts, 13 walks. Teams hitting a combined 238 against him. I would assume his nickname is the Wild Thing with 13 walks and 16 innings. <laughs> well, but only a 3.31 ERA, that's not bad. Yeah. And to steal your line, he's a, a junior out of Plymouth, Mass, Massachusetts. So right now they're hoping he'll be the rock for them to get oh, him out of this. I'm, I, I apologize. I, I, I know. It's really I can hear the booth groaning right now, and I don't blame you. He <laughs> comes in in a tough spot. <laughs> tougher, a tougher spot than I just put myself in. <laughs> well, he's a lefty. Yeah, I'm sure he throws hard. We'll see what he has as he uh, goes against Chad Ferry, a lefty. Tigers trailing by three, but they got something going here in the fifth with a couple of hits, a couple of uh, singles back and forth. Fred Cunningham along with Tim Beret here. Clemson trying to uh, take this series. They've won the series. Now they're going for the sweep in this one. And uh, you do so much basketball during the season. Are you sure which sport you're watching just because of we've seen the up-and-down nature of this game? I'm, I think so. I'm waiting for a three-point, for a three-run homer to call it a three-point goal. But other than that. <laughs> Well, Ferry could do it. He had a home run yesterday. It was a yeah. solo shot. We got it right here. And he comes up in a situation with two on and nobody out. Was Clemson actually uh, interesting. Tigers yesterday had their best offensive game of the year. And in basketball, Clemson had its best offensive game of the year up at Boston College. 69% oh. from the field. The greatest field goal percentage in Clemson history wow. in ACC road game. Basically making that seven out of every ten shots. Yeah, That's it was crazy. Amazing. So Walsh, his first pitch, taken for a strike. Go with the curve on his very first pitch. Slow curve, 78 miles an hour. Get a look at it. Nicely done. Ferry is 0 for 2 on the day. Fly ball out and a strikeout. A day after he had a career-high three hits. 
Pitch is in the dirt. Burns is able to block it. That'll make it one and one. Just look at Chad stepping in there. Six three our score here in the bottom of the fifth. Boston College trying to get a win in this series. Good eye there as it pitches low, two and one. As we showed you on a graphic earlier, Monty's 13 and two against the Eagles. And now in his fifth year at Clemson. Here comes the 2-1 pitch from Walsh. Takes for a strike two and two. Yeah, basically, outfield basically playing fair to hit the opposite way. Pitch right in there for a strike to make it two and two. Now you mentioned Monty's fifth season. Time flies by. Yeah, it sure does. Does not seem possible. Fouled it off left side. Of course he made that Wow, the kid caught that. What a great. That was an awesome catch. I don't yeah. Know if that on camera or not. <laughs> and he <laughs> tips his hat. Nicely done. <laughs> it was curving away. Uh, we'll pick it up. And we got it. Yeah. Wow, it almost nonchalant. Yeah, I know. Gee. Just like nothing but a thing. Time is called as Monty Lee goes. There you go. Trying to give for that kid a scholarship <laughs> for the 2028 season. Yeah. Clemson right now with the number one 28-28 recruiting <laughs> class in the country after that. <laughs> Three and two, big pitch coming out, coming up. <laughs> Still trying to go. He looked like it was just no big deal. Yeah. Big pitch here. As you mentioned, 3-2 is the count. And now time is taken. James Parker is on deck. Good close look at Joey Walsh. The pitch, it's low. Bases are loaded, nobody out. Thanks to the walk to Ferry. Three, two pitch in the dirt, I believe. So that brings up James Parker. Bases full of Tigers. He's 0 for 2 on the afternoon. Flew out to the first baseman the last time up. And you can check out your runners. You got Ferry at first, Sharp at second, Hawkins at third. First time Parker has been up this season with the bases loaded. Ground ball to the third. They'll get one. They try to turn two, and they get them both. Clemson gets at least a run across, but, man, what a big double play that was for the Eagles. Six to four is the lead, but the double play certainly hurts. Yep, got around it, gloved nicely over there at third. The turn was good. And got him by plenty. So Hawkins comes in and scores. So that brings up Hackenberg with Hawkins at third. Runner at third, love to get him in with a hit. Makes a cut and misses. Hackenberg got hit by a pitch right on the left elbow pad in the first, and they grounded out the third the last time up. It's four for seven in the first two games of the series. Get his average over 300. The pitch in the dirt. Once again, Burns has to slide over to his left. Did a good job there. Yeah. A ball and a strike to Adam Hackenberg. 
Clemson has one across. They've got a runner 90 feet away. That one came up about five feet short of the plate. Another Burns good block by Burns. Burns, yeah. Burns is uh, earning his entire four-year scholarship here today. <laughs> Wonder if all that action is listed on that huge card on his left wrist. <laughs> Look at Stay that. in front of the ball. Look at that. Saw him do it a lot I yesterday. I've never seen one that elaborate. I haven't either. It's color coded. Two one pitch coming to Hackenberg. Ground ball right side. Got a chance. They're going to make the throw over. It's going to be, they get him at first. Wow. Nicely done by the Boston College defense. Clemson had a chance for a huge inning. They'll have to settle for one. 6-4, Boston College leads. Yes, the youngster, nicely done. Nice play. Play of the inning for sure. Top of the sixth inning at Doug Kingsmore Stadium, Boston College leading Clemson 6-4. to four. Tigers got a run in the fifth, had a chance for more, but hit into a double play. And here is the play that ended the inning with a runner at third. And it's just a good effort there by Walsh, who came in an awfully close play. Bang, bang right there, but with two out, BC was able to get out of the inning. And again, Clemson had the bases loaded with one down, and they were still only able to get one run across. So Boston College leads Clemson 6-4, to four, as you're going to see once again Jeffrey Gilbert, who is the third pitcher of the day for the Tigers coming in. That try to keep at least Boston College within range. The Eagles have two runs in the second. They scored two in the third and added two in the fifth. And we're going to see the number nine, one, and two hitters coming up. For the Eagles here, as we get things going, grounds crew getting their last little bit of work done in this one. Six runs on nine hits for Boston College. Four, seven, and zero for the Tigers. As the inning begins, with Dante Baldelli leading things off, the center fielder. He's got an RBI double in the game. He also flew out to left field in this one. Baldelli at 235 on the season. Gilbert's first pitch gets a called strike. Baldelli is the younger brother of Twins manager Rocco Baldelli. See, he takes that pitch. He's a senior out of Cumberland, Rhode Island. He was one for eight in the series coming in. There's a fly ball. It's going to go out of the play on the right side, so it's quickly an 0-2 count. BC up, trying to add to that lead. Tigers got him back within two. But no, they left an opportunity slide back there in the fifth. Pitch from Gilbert, round ball, gonna be handled by Parker. Makes the throw to Sharp, one down. Throw right on the money. We've had an airless game today by both teams. Big difference from Friday night when both teams had four errors, but of course, the game was played in a wind tunnel. Yeah. It's a big difference. That was one of those days you could hear the wind. I remember walking outside oh, man. on my porch. There's a line shot. It's right at Parker, a little bit handcuffed by it, but nicely done there by James Parker. Congratulations to the Clemson coaches who had a perfect defensive plan yeah. on that batter. Had a moment to struggle with it, but still came up with it. Nicely done. Parker makes the first two plays of the inning. And that brings up Brian Dempsey. Takes a 
Takes a swing and a miss. Dempsey at 333 on the season. He's 0 for 3. Rounded out to second the last time. That was the terrific play, if you remember, by Henderson to smother that ball. Well, that's the third time they've hit the ball in that general direction of Parker, but this time they hit it beyond where he was positioned, beyond the grasp of Gilbert, and it's a two-out single for Dempsey. Gilbert has done a good job keeping the ball down low. That was a little bit up over the plate, but only two of the first 16 batters had made a, had a ground out for Boston College. Now three of the last four have had ground outs, including a double play. Here's Cody Morissette, and not a good time to see him with at least a runner aboard. He's three for three on the day, two singles, a stolen base, and he doubled the last time up. He's got seven hits in the series. And as Mike Gambino told us, he just hits. Doesn't seem to matter who they're playing. 4.53 is his average. You know, you get early in the season, and here we are not even into a double-digit day in March yet. But, you know, 15 games in the season, playing every day, 4.53 starts to jump out at you pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. Dempsey 2 for 4 in the stolen base department on the season. Fouled it. One and two. Looks like he fouled it off his yeah. calf there. That ball was coming back. I think it would have made the strike zone, so that's why I said he swung at it. Come on, coach. That single by Dempsey gives Boston College 10 in the game. The pitch, fouled it away again, he'll stay alive. We're only in the sixth inning. Some fans trying to make some noise, they can smell the end of the inning, end of the half inning. Fly ball, left field, Ferry is there. He brings it in. So it's a single that goes for nothing that time. They finally get Morris set out, and we go to the bottom of the six, 6-4 six, Eagles. If you are just joining us, you've missed a lot of offense in this game. Boston College got things going. That's a Jack Cunningham home run that tied the game at one. But Elijah Henderson with this double, and it brought home two runs and gave the Tigers the lead again. But then Boston College responds. So we go to the third inning. Here's Luke Gold, a big hitter when runners are in scoring position. He brought home two that time to give Boston College the lead. And in the fifth, Clemson breaks into it a little bit. Actually, this is a Parker grounding into that double play. It did get a run across, but that was a Hitting into a double play with the bases loaded and nobody out. So the Tigers only got one across in that inning. And here we are in the bottom of the six. It's a 6-4 BC lead, and Bo Mikowski will lead things off. He's been aboard. He's walked twice. Top of the order up after him. Joey Walsh in relief. Pitch one full inning so far. Yeah, he walked the first batter he faced, but then he got that double play. Strike call, one and one. Another strike call, one and two. Clemson has left seven on base in this game. BC has left six. Walsh has started a, some over his career. This is his 53rd career appearance. He has started seven times. Come on. 
There's a ground ball that's going to go foul. One and two the count. So they bring in a pitcher with a lot of experience. Yeah. In a big situation. This is his fourth year with the program. He uh, didn't play in 2017 due to injury. Then made 18 appearances in 18, 29 appearances last year. Misses. Pitches low, two and two. Mikowski waits for the 2 2 pitch. Found and out of play toward the BC dugout. Everybody okay? Came off the netting there and bounced back onto the field of play. Still a 2 2 count. There's a ground ball to her third. Morissette is there. Makes the throw to Cunningham. First out of the inning. Nicely done by Cody Morissette. He went with the pitch well, just didn't quite get it in the hole enough. So Dylan Brewer comes up. He's got two hits on the day. Let off the Tigers first with a double, then singled to right field in the fourth. It was a two out single. And then you'll recall that he tried to steal second. And that's when they called Elijah Henderson for batter interference. It sent him back to first and he wound up not getting across in the inning. That was in the fourth. One zero pitch, strike called. It's a wonderful time of the year when uh, if you get a have a big game. He came into this game hitting one ninety four, two for three. And he's hitting two thirty one. <laughs> Quickly adds thirty plus to his batting average. Took a big swing and a miss to fall behind one and two. Man, his first Clemson home run, in Columbia, the Friday night. That's one you'll remember. Yeah, deep to right field. Because the wind was kind of blowing out. So I got a little bit of a booster rocket. <laughs> Pitch misses, two and two. First Boston College opens the first basically five weeks of the season on the road. They were supposed to play at South Carolina on Wednesday night, but that game got rained out. Popped it up. Chasing hard after it, but Morissette will not get there. They were supposed to play Wednesday night, but they got washed out pretty much like pretty much everything did for much of last week. It was nice, though, that the sunshine broke through in time for the weekend baseball series across our area. Yes. Now, Boston College is supposed to play at home Tuesday against Holy Cross, which would be the earliest home game in the history of Boston College baseball. <laughs> and I'm not kidding, it would be. Wow. I'm not sure what the weather's doing up there, but Holy Cross, of course, in Worcester, Massachusetts, just a few miles away from the Boston College campus. Pitches low and misses. Three balls and two strikes. Currently in Boston, it's not bad. It's not almost bad. like it is. It's, it's partly cloudy in 52. They could play today as long as they don't have snow from the previous yeah. storm, which I don't think they do. 12 mile an hour wind there. Popped it up. Could be trouble coming in hard and finally calling for it and it falls. You saw Dempsey chase after it. He called the second or the uh, third baseman and the left fielder off. But that was slicing away from him the whole way, and it's going to drop for a base hit. Yeah, the wind gusting a little bit, especially on that play. And it just kept drifting more and more and more. And he 
didn't even touch it. Yeah. Dempsey signaled that he had it, but it went away from him, and it drops in for a base hit. Third hit of the game for Brewer. His first career three-hit game as a Tiger. He had had one other two-hit game. That brings up now Elijah Henderson. He's got a two-run double in this game. He's having a big weekend. But now he's got the hustling Brewer all the way at second. Yeah, really like to see him get a single from a Clemson standpoint and chip away one more run. Make it a one run game. If you're a meteorological fan, it's 58, by the way, right now here. So takes that pitch for a strike. Nice slow curve, 77 miles an hour by Walsh. Henderson is hitting 412 with runners in scoring position. Tigers trying to crawl back in this one as they trail by two. Fouled it back. One of the things that Monty Lee talks about a lot is winning those last nine outs and Trailing right now here in the sixth, and with this Boston College offense, they're going to have to do it. They're going to need to win all nine of those today, it looks like. But they've been resilient. They came back one week ago today right in this stadium against South Carolina. Picked up a victory. Same thing Friday night. They trailed twice and won. Laid off of it. Makes it a 2-2 count. Joey Walsh in relief. Over 30 pitches now. Pitch taken by Henderson. We got a full count. Pierre Meredith is on deck. Walsh taking his time. Big pitch right here. There's Meredith. Took that one inside, and that's a walk. So after a ground ball out, it's a double and a walk. Two aboard for Kier Meredith. Yep, definitely inside. No question about that. Look at the Boston College bullpen right now as they're going to take a moment for a mound visit. No one throwing yet. They have a they have a stretch kind of thing they do first before they start throwing. Stretching kind of warm up, but right now they're just taking a moment out there. Of course, Kier Meredith. Very good with runners in scoring position. Right now he's batting 438. He was batting 600 at the start of the series as the mound visit goes on, and they break it up before Scott Klein has to take too many steps out there from his spot at home base, home plate. Big situation here, kind of a big inning for Boston College this year. 5-0 and when they lead after 6, 0-6 when they're trailing after 6. So here is Meredith. Reached for the 15th game in a row this season. All 15 games played by the Tigers with that walk. That was in the first. Showed a bunt. There's going to be a quick throw back to second. He saw the hustle there by Brewer to get back. Ball was dropped out there. I'm not sure whether it'd be a close call or not, but he got back. Peter Burns came up throwing. Yeah. Couldn't field it cleanly. Now 
keep Brewers' attention a little bit. One more look at it. Real good look there as well. Good camera work all the way around. Burns was, you can see him looking over toward it. his team's visiting dugout. Checks that, uh, that enormous checklist on his wrist, and we're ready to go. This has been the longest one pit pitch at bat in a while. Yes. Dabo, too, may be taken off. Flying in from everywhere to watch this game. <laughs> <laughs> Pitch is outside. Yeah, they're stacking up the planes. Halfway to halfway to downtown Anderson right now. Or they're just coming in early for next year's home opener against Louisville. <laughs> Get there early. Get your get your tailgate started soon. Pitch misses two and one. Interesting that Kier uh, squared around the first pitch. Hasn't since. Just, uh, I almost wonder if he was trying to bunt for a base hit instead of a sacrifice. Of course, wouldn't think he'd sacrifice. So well, maybe would with one out. Got a uh, three for three batter on deck. Yeah. Heart of the order coming up here with. Two aboard and one down. Three and one. Meredith's on base percentage at 500. Go along with that 400 average. 3-1 pitch. Got a call for a strike. That'll make it a full count. Nice pitch. Came right in there. Back-to-back -back three and two counts by Walsh. Has not given up a run yet. Three-two pitch. Swing and a miss, drop strike, but he will be out. First base occupied. Yep. Big strike out there for the second out of the inning. Oh, the fifth time this year, Meredith has struck out. So that brings up Briar Hawkins, and he has had a day. Three hits so far, including an RBI in the first. Good job going with the pitch, kind of spraying the ball around the yard. Well, he comes up in a big situation right here. Runners at first and second. He is three for three, the, home, the cleanup hitter. Brewer is at second. Henderson is at first. Strike called on the first pitch. Outfield is straight away. Yeah, caught the corner. Yeah. Oh, one pitch, ground ball to short. Dempsey makes the flip over, and Boston College gets out of another jam, second inning in a row. Tigers had some runners on, and they don't get much out of it. We go to the seventh. It's 6-4 Eagles. Always a lot of young fans here at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. This Sunday is a good day to be here. It's Run the Bases Sunday, so they'll get a chance to go down on the field and run around after this one. And, of course, thanks to the time change, Mom and Dad, you get an extra hour to watch them run around. You can't use the, oh, it's too dark excuse. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, we started at 1 o'clock. Yeah, better still. So Joe Swayze will lead things off here in the seventh for Boston College, his team leading. By a count of six to four, he's been aboard twice. He walked and stole a base and singled the last time up. He scored a third of their runs. Wow. 
Jeffrey Gilbert continuing and for work with the Tigers. Nicely done there. Gilbert so far is not allowed to run, given up just one hit so far. One and one is the count. He's lowered his ERA to 0 0.84 for the season, but not allowing a run yet. Swing and a miss. Yeah, you mentioned this earlier that he made the team Swayze did as a, as a walk on. Yeah. Last year he was on the all ACC tournament team. That's a pretty good success story right there. Yeah. Boston College won two games in the ACC tournament last year, yeah. including a victory over Clemson. Yeah. That was a game in which Morissette hit a couple of home runs. Yeah. Two teams played four times last year and split the four. Clemson won the regular season series in New England and, and lost two to one, and then Boston College won the ACC tournament game. 2-2 pitch to Swayze. Ground ball. It's going to get by the hole in the infield between Hawkins and Parker. And Boston College has a leadoff single. Just found the right spot for that grounder to trickle through. And that brings up Jack Cunningham. Got that home run in the first, or excuse me, in the second. Walked the last time up as a strikeout in between. 396 is his average. Pitch from Gilbert. Taken for a ball. Well, during pregame, uh, <clears throat> we talked about the potency of these numbers two through f uh, two, three, <clears throat> five hitters in the BC lineup. They're seven for 13 in the game today. Wow. And scored five of their six runs. And seven of their 11 hits. There's a fly ball. Chasing after it hard is Ferry. He comes into foul territory and slides to try to make it. And you can see his disappointment. Couldn't catch up with it. So simply go for a long foul ball. It looked like he should have gone with a scoop instead of trying to yeah. catch it. For you. So that keeps Cunningham alive. Just a, a long foul ball. One and one is the count. Gilbert's pitch. Watches it, two and one. Went with the breaking ball in that pitch. Left it a little bit too high. Cunningham, a senior from South Riding, Virginia. Another fly ball. Ferry drifts back and pulls it in. First out of the inning. So they kept Cunningham off base to the three times he's come up since that home run. Not nearly the run that time for Chad, and that's going to bring up Luke Gold, who's had a good afternoon. He had that sack fly last time up in the fifth. Two runs single in the third. So he's knocked in three on the day. That gives him 12 on the season. And a throw over to first as they keep an eye on Swayze. In college, six runs, 11 hits, and no errors. The Tigers 4-8-0 oh, 
Everybody in the lineup for Boston College has a hit, except for their leadoff batter, Freilich. Pitch taken for a strike, 0 and 1. Gold wants that one. Falls behind, 0 and 1. Gilbert's pitch, it's high, 1 and 1. Gold is a freshman from Ballston, New York. Guess he's not related to Eli. Then. Yeah. <laughs> one one pitch inside. You know, and I know he's been the voice of the Crimson Tide for years and years. But when you say Eli Gold, I still think NASCAR first. Uh huh. And then and then Alabama. I don't follow a lot of NASCAR, so I still think Alabama first. <laughs> now, should I say Alabama or Eli says Alabama? Alabama. Two one pitch. Takes a cut and misses. Again, he's a freshman, but he is pretty much securing himself in the starting lineup now. He started the last seven games. At second, he's started every game for BC on the season. Right. But the last seven games at second base. BC's had the same lineup, seven or same guys play seven. In a row. Yeah. Right. Right. Big strikeout there for Gilbert. It's his first. Yeah. Poured it right in. It was going to be probably in the outside corner. Take a little outside. Ramon Jimenez now the designated hitter comes up. Knocked in a run with a single back in the fifth. Yeah, put uh, Boston College up 6-3. to three. It's now 6-4. Takes a cut and misses. So right now that RBI stands as the insurance run. Clemson will have the five, six, and seven hitters coming up in their half of the seventh. Runner going. The throw from Hackenberg, not in time, so a stolen base for Swazi, and he gets in the scoring position with two out. Second stolen base of the game. Perfect pitch to throw from the catcher standpoint. Yeah. But uh, I kind of stole it on the on the pitcher. I think he was, even if it was a perfect throw, he would have been in there. You can see it from all those angles. Boston College three for three on stolen bases today. Clemson opponents were just 10 for 20 coming into the game. Fly ball, right side, chasing after it is sharp, but it's going to go well up into the seats. Gilbert just trying to get out of this inning so he can keep his team in range. Clemson has left nine so far in this game, and they had a lot of opportunities in the fifth and the sixth, and credit to the Eagles for getting out of both of those jams. There's a fly ball. Does Sharp have a play on it? He does have it. Nicely done by Davis Sharp right in front of the duck out. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Clemson needs some runs. Boston College up 6-4. Bottom of the seventh inning, Boston College leading Clemson 6-4. Final game of this opening series for both teams in the ACC. The Tigers took the first two, so they've got the series. They'd love the sweep, but they got some work to do. Davis Sharp will lead things off. Singled the last time up in the fifth to go along with a couple of strikeouts. 
Sharp at 3.06 on the season. Joey Walsh continues in relief for Boston College. Sharp takes that first pitch. One and zero oh is the count. Pitch inside, two and zero. Oh. Tigers have not scored against Walsh. Big shift on right now. Look at that. You got three infielders on the left side between second and third. And what I find odd is that the left fielder's not exactly playing him to pull. Yeah. And the left fielder's just standing right there in front of the Tiger ball. <laughs> 3 0 pitch. Walks him on four. Second walk for Walsh. I said Walsh has started before. I think he started seven games in his career. It's not like he's a pure reliever. He didn't throw a lot of pitches. So Chad Ferry comes up. He's 0 for 2 on the day. He walked the last time up. Struck out once. He was the first batter to face Walsh back in the fifth inning, and he walked. So this is the tenth batter for Walsh. He's thrown 45 pitches. We'll see if he's picked up anything since that first trip up to the plate. You're right, a lot of time with relievers. You're more successful the second time around in the order. one -oh pitch coming from Joey Walsh. Misses again. <laughs> the Clemson fans on the third base line making some noise. There's a drive center field. Baldelli is there, can make a play on it, though. Yeah, wind blowing in kind of knocked that down. I thought he hammered it. Yeah. When he first hit it. it looked a, like a long drive off the, off the bat, but I think you're right. That wind's still coming in. Has a play on it with room to spare, so with one away, that brings up James Parker. James is... 0 for 3 on the day. Granted into that double play with nobody out. Back in the fifth. There's a drive left field. It's a fair ball. He will round second. They will send the runner to home. Here's the relay. The slide, and he is going to be called out. The relay throw was in time to Burns. He had to try to swing wide to the plate and just try to get it with his hand and he's going to get called out. All right, down the line into foul territory. Fielder gets over there as quick as he can and Sharp tried to get him with the relay throw was very good. Yep. Had plenty of time. Got him on the shoulder blade as yep. you can see well, well before he ever got even close to the plate. Good angle of it right there. So now there's two out. Parker is at second for Hackenberg. Fouls off that first pitch. Adam is hitless on the day. Reached on a, after he was hit by a pitch in the second. off to the right side. Yeah, 
Big relay throw by. Yeah, actually the throw was actually by the second baseman. Yeah. They were, they were playing Parker to throw in the shift, so the second baseman actually. Yeah, that was Luke the, Gold coming uh, all the way over there. Yeah, there's a wild pitch that will get the runner now with two out, but now he gets the third. That's a wild pitch for either team. Now Parker at third. Tigers trying to get this at least back to a one-run game, but they'll need Hackenberg to either get a board or get a base hit here with two out. One-two pitch, takes it. Similar situation to Friday night. He had one of those two RBI with a two out or two uh, out uh, two strike pitch. Walsh will step off. Not in too much of a rush. Here comes the 2-2. There's going to drive. It's going to drop for a base hit. A run will score. Hackenberg with the RBI single, and the Tigers are back within a run at 6-5. And a clutch two-out RBI by Hackenberg. That's his fifth hit of the series. He's 5 for 10 now. And again, going with the pitch beautifully. Love to see a guy go with the opposite field when the ball's out on yeah. the, over the plate. Parker came in to score, and now Clemson's got it back to six to five. Bo Mikowski will try to keep the inning going with Hackenberg at first. He's been aboard twice with a couple of walks. He grounded out the third, his last trip up. Ground ball. Fouled off to the first base side. The eight, nine, and one hitters will be coming up for BC when we head to the eighth. By the way, that was now Clemson's 10th hit of the day. Second straight day, they've made it into double figures and hits after having none up until yesterday. Here's a ground ball. Playable. Gold is there. He makes the flip to Cunningham. The side is retired. Clemson gets within a run. We go to the eighth. Boston College leads the Tigers 6 5. After today, the Tigers have a couple of midweek games. They'll play Presbyterian here on Tuesday night. Tim and I will have that game for you on ACC Network Extra. Winthrop will be in here. They'll make the trip over from Rock Hill before the Tigers have their first true road series of the season. That'll be next weekend at Wake Forest, followed by a midweek road game against Coastal Carolina. For Boston College, they finally get to go home. They'll play Holy Cross on March 10th before another trip to the south to play NC State coming up next weekend. And you mentioned what that that's going to be an early home game for BC. The earliest ever, according to their notes, if they get it played, March the 10th. And they have Siena the next week. Eighth inning. Peter Burns will lead things off here. He's got a double back in the second. There's a fly ball, but it's going to be a foul ball off to the left side. Gilbert done a good job for the Tigers. He's pitched uh, two and a third. Excuse me, two and two thirds. Has not given up a run. Given up uh, just two hits. Keeping Clemson in the game. He, as they've nibbled away at this lead, there's a ground ball. Hawkins has it. Over to Davis Sharp. Davis is able to pull it in. One down. Adam played perfectly. So with one down, 
Dante Baldelli will come up, the number nine hitter. Has an RBI double in the game today. That was in the second. Yeah, Gilbert's done a nice job of just keeping Clemson his range, and they've been able just to get a little bit closer, a little bit closer. They trailed at 6-3 at one point. They're now down just by a run at 6-5. Big cut and a miss by Baldelli. One and one. This little 88 mile an hour fastball. It was up in the zone, but he blew it by him. The pitch. Fly ball right side. That should be out of play. It is. He'll make it one and two. Forty pitches now for Gilbert in relief. Here comes the one two. Ground ball, base hit to the right side. Pass Davis Sharp. Baldelli's second of the game. And with one out and a runner at first, here comes the top of the order. And Monty Lee is on his way out to the mound. Got to stop it right here. <clears throat> I wonder if he's going to bring in Carson Spires. He is making a move right now and making his way in is Carson Spires. We will talk about Carson when we return. 6-5, BC in the eighth. Carson Spires on for the Tigers to make his eighth appearance of the season. His record right now is 2-0. He's pitched 11 and a third innings. The only run he gave up was unearned. Three hits allowed, 13 strikeouts, just three walks, and teams batting 0-79 against him. Yeah, that's the big stat at 0-79. This is his second appearance in the series. On Friday night, he pitched the last inning in a third, and he got the win in that game. He struck out two, didn't walk anybody, didn't give up any runs. And uh, so that got him up to 2-0. Uh, Tied for third in Clemson history in career saves. Well, he comes into a situation where the Tigers are just trying to keep within range here in the eighth inning. There's one out, one aboard as Dante Baldelli hit that single. Now you got the top of the order coming up for BC. Clemson trailed this game six to three. They've drawn back to within six to five. So again, just trying to keep close enough to give their bats a chance. So they'll go with Spires here. Spires, that's a name you hear a little bit around Clemson, haven't you? Yes, that's for sure. Actually, I met his grandfather, uh, Bud Spires, who played on Bill Wilhelm's first team in 1958, was the starting shortstop. Wow. Fielded at 947 that year, which was a record that stood from 1958 until 1987 when his son, Bill Spires, broke it, <laughs> fielding 950 at the shortstop position. And that record was later shattered by Khalil Green, who fielded it 970 in 2002. He was awfully good. That brings up Sal Fralick, top of the order, the right fielder. As Tim mentioned earlier, this is the only hitter for Boston College today that's not had a hit. And he's 0 for 13 in the series. He is the leadoff man. Spires again continuing to keep an eye on Baldelli. Who is 2 for 3 on the season in stolen base category. First pitch from Spires. Runner is going. Swing and a miss. Foul tipped it. So that will send Baldelli back to first. One other note on 
<clears throat> Khalil Green, 2002, he was the national player of the year. Not only did he set the rec Clemson record for fielding by a shortstop, oh, he hit 470 that year. 470. Yeah. That's like one of those averages you saw from somebody in the 1930s when yeah. he only played 12 games. <laughs> 474 a season. Base hit. No, it's not. It's robbed by Henderson, who makes the double play. What a way to get out of the inning for Carson Spires. A spectacular play by Henderson. They double up the Eagles. We go to the bottom of the eighth. It's a one-run Eagles lead. Six five Boston College. We go to the bottom of the eighth, and here's how the Tigers got out of the top half of the inning. Never ever assume a hit's a hit until it drops. Elijah Henderson had other ideas. He just makes the great grab on the shot by Fralick, and they're able to get the double play to get out of the inning. Well, in your defense, Fred, I thought it was a hit too. So <laughs> nice play by Henderson. Meanwhile, I got a new pitcher for Boston College. It is Will Heslink. Makes his sixth appearance of the season. He's got a big ERA, 9.45. He's pitched six and two-thirds innings, allowed seven runs all earned, eight hits, three strikeouts, and six walks. Teams hitting 286 against him. He has not pitched earlier in this uh, series, but he takes over for uh, Joey Walsh. Did a pretty good job. Yeah. While he was in there. That's Came like out it. in the fifth. He pitched the uh, rest. He pitched the fifth. Statistically, pitched the fifth, sixth, and seventh. Gave up uh, two runs. The Tigers got five hits off of him. So he will be facing the top of the Clemson order here, and it's going to be Dylan Brewer leading things off. And Brewer's had a big afternoon. Three hits. Two doubles, a single. Also has a strikeout in there, but Dylan moving that average up to 250. Enhanced it by 56 points. First pitch is in the dirt. S link listed at 6'2, 225. Takes a strike, one and one. Nice pitch in there to even the count up. The one, one. Didn't catch it that time. It's low for a ball, two and one. As links in his third year with the program. 28th a career appearance. He's 0-1 for his career and has never had a save. Brewer takes that one as it goes outside, 3-1. He's got 22 career strikeouts and 21 career walks. Once again, Peter Burns has had to move around a lot. He's going to probably have a, I'd take a nap if I was him on the way back to Boston, the way he's had to work today. <laughs> he walks him on five pitches and the tying runs aboard. I'll bring up Elijah Henderson. Well, that's the job you'd like to see from a uh, leadoff batter. Brewer's gotten on four out of five times, three hits and a walk. And they're not going to waste any time. Another pitching change. A new pitcher returning when we come, when we'll meet him when we come back. It's a 6-5 Boston College lead. The new pitcher for Boston College is Brian McMonagle. As you see him taking his warm-up pitches right now, and McMonagle coming into this game. Is making his fourth appearance. He's got a record of 1-0. He's got a save on the season. He's pitched 
Two complete innings, no runs allowed, four hits, no walks, no strikeouts. Teams batting 400 against him. He's got a save, and he's allowing a 400 batting average. That's an interesting comment. Yes. This is his first year with the Boston College program. Well, he comes in with the Eagles trying to hang on the lead. They're trying to get out of Clemson with at least one win in this series. BC has not scored since they put two on the board in the fifth. That gave them a 6-3 to three lead. Tigers got a run back in the bottom of the inning, added another in the seventh. And here we are in the eighth. Nobody out. It's a 6-5 lead for BC and the Tigers have the leadoff man Dylan Brewer aboard. Tigers trying to nibble him. Tie it up. So here's Elijah Henderson. He's got a two run double in the game. Been aboard twice. He walked the last time up. 315 is his average. To the right-hander, McMonagle, this is his first pitch. Clemson right there as he shows the bunt. Strike call. Yeah, he was in there. Scoreboard operator, not sure where that would go. Yeah. Not sure what yeah. it's called. Yeah. Got a little screened out there. Trying to move the runner. Shows bunt. Pitch misses, it's one and one. One, one pitch. Fouled it off, one and two. Fourth pitcher of the day for Boston College. McMonagle's pitch bounces in the dirt. Once again, Burns has to do a good job of keeping in front of it as that pitch came up about three or four feet short of the plate. Burns did his job, though, to keep it in front of him and keep Brewer at first base. Throw over to first as they keep an eye on Brewer. Henderson's from Greer, South Carolina. He's played for Forest City in the Coastal Plains League each of the last two summers. Very good summer league. Yeah. Up there. Ground ball, base hit. Found its way past Dempsey. Tigers have the first two runners of the inning aboard. A walk followed by a base hit. Here comes Kier Meredith. That ball was hit right where the shortstop normally is, but they really were playing Henderson to hit the ball up the middle. The shortstop was way over towards second base. And it led to a base hit, his second hit of the game. Third time he's been on base. Now, what do you do with Meredith here? Yeah, Monty Lee coming out having a quick word with him. Try to sacrifice and give up an out. Of course, he's got good speed going down the baseline. Yeah. Clemson has had opportunities. I recall they had a bases loaded, nobody out situation. Only got one across. They've left 10 on board for the game. So here's Meredith. Struck out the last time up. 0 for 3 on the day. McMonagle steps away from it. At least 12 people in the crowd said balk. <laughs> 
One of those things you can always count on. Any kind of irregular movement by a pitcher. Bach. Shows the bun, lays it down, it's gonna go foul. Couldn't quite keep it fair. That'll make it 0-1. No, it was off to a good start, but just threw it into foul territory by a foot. Yep. So Kier will come back. Now down 0-1. McMonagle taking his time. Kiera, 4 12 hitter with runners in scoring position. The tying run is at second, but he's going to show the bunt again. A strike called. It's 0 and 2. Where was this one? Wow. That's pretty low. Yeah. Well, if you're going to bunt it, should have been a bad pitch to bunt. McMonagle's pitch. Ground ball, right side, it's foul. Briar Hawkins is on deck. The 0-2 pitch, ground ball. Dempsey has it for one, but they won't be able to stretch it over, so you got runners at the corners now with one away, but the tying runs at third. So you're going to have the fleet-footed Kier Meredith on it first. Fly ball, of course, would tie the game up. Briar Hawkins comes to the plate three for four in the day. Well, based on today, this is the guy you want in there. Yep. Knocked in a run in the first. Rounded out to the shortstop. The last time up. Five for 13 in the series. The catcher Peter Burns out there making a couple of adjustments. You have to think about sending Meredith to get that win or lead run out to second base. Meredith is going. No, he, no, he didn't. He was. Yeah. He faked it. Burns came up ready to throw but didn't. You can see you broke the yeah. One-zero pitch, taken for a strike. It's one and one. Pitch is getting a low strike call today. Yeah. A ball and a strike, one out. Tying run is at third. Meredith's at first. The pitch. Takes it, two and one. Well, it really took a lot off of that, just yeah. 66 miles an hour according to the scoreboard on that pitch. It was a breaking ball that didn't break. McMonagle and a jam. Throw over to first, Meredith is back. Plenty of time. As you can see Brewer walk back to third. He's the tying run. Two one pitch coming. But first another thrower to first.
Here's the 2-1. There's a fly ball. Left field. Is it deep enough? Swazi makes the catch. Here comes Brewer, and we are tied at six. Briar Hawkins got around on one and <clears throat> pulled it plenty deep. He didn't even attempt to throw to home plate. Got around it nicely, almost got it to the edge of the paw. So Clemson has climbed all the way back from trailing 6-3. to three. It's now 6-6, six, six, and Davis Sharp is up with two away here in the bottom of the eighth inning, and another trip to the mound for B.C. Runner at first. They will make a pitching change, so we will see another new pitcher for the Eagles. We will introduce you to John Campbell Jr. when we come back. The new pitcher for Boston College is John Campbell Jr., appearance number six on the season. He's got a one-and-one one record, an ERA of 3.38. He's pitched five in the third innings. He's allowed a couple of earned runs on six hits, two strikeouts, and a walk. Opponents hitting 286 against him. And he pitched a uh, perfect inning um, yesterday in relief. Faced three batters, got them all out. No walks, no strikeouts. Comes in right now in a tough situation. Yesterday it was um, as part of while Clemson had a big lead in the ball game yesterday. Today he comes on with two out here in the bottom of the eighth. Tigers have a runner at first with two down, but they've just knocked in the tying run on a sacrifice fly by Briar Hawkins. He'll be facing Davis Sharp once he gets his warm-up pitches done. Now you got Kier Meredith with two out on first. Sharp is one for three with a walk and two strikeouts. <clears throat> Could be a situation that they send Meredith. He's three for six in stolen bases this year. They try to get him into scoring position. So here comes Davis, who's been a part of all three games. Yesterday's starting pitcher in the lineup on Friday night and playing first base today. 306 is his average. The two, three, and four hitters are due up for BC when we go to the ninth. Runner going. Here's the throw. Throw is there in time, and they get him. So the Tigers try to get Meredith into scoring position, but he gets nailed. But Clemson gets a run, and we'll go to the ninth. We're tied at six. Boston College and Clemson all tied at six. And Carson Spires in relief came in last inning, and he is facing Brian Dempsey for the Eagles here in the ninth. Dempsey, Morissette, and Swazi are all up due for BC. This is outside. Carson had an extended stretch. Although he'd only thrown three pitches at that point, but it was kind of a long inning with a couple of pitching changes for BC. Facing the meat of the Boston College order. His next four hitters are seven of 14, seven for 14 in the game. And they've scored five of their six runs. This is a big inning for Carson. Dempsey singled the last time up. Fouled it out of play. Coming into this game, these four next four batters were hitting 397 for the season. Wow. Combined. They were coming into the game, they were 79 for 199. Mm. Interesting game here today. BC has not scored since the fifth. 
Swing and a miss. Strikeout for Carson Spires. One out in the ninth. Great pitch. That ball had some movement at the end. Yeah. Cody Morissette, the third baseman. Three hits on the day. One of them's a double. Flew out to left field the last, last time, but he's had a terrific series. Big shift for him. Inside, yeah, once again, we'll show that from above, but you've got three Clemson infielders between first and third, and they're all playing back right along the dirt and the grass. Three for four with two runs scored for Morissette. A seven for 12 in the series. Slice that one away foul. It'll make it one and one. The pitch from Spires. Check swinged it, fouled it off, one and two. Five, six, and seven hitters coming up for Clemson in the bottom of the ninth. Davis Sharp will be up. He was at the plate when Meredith got caught stealing to end the inning. Fans making some noise. Here's the one-two pitch. Round ball, and the shift did not work that time. There was nobody there. And Morissette is aboard with a one-out single. He's got a good enough bat control. It doesn't matter, really matter what you do with yeah. the shift. He's going to hit it where they're not. Four hits now. Yeah, that would even a normal situation that would have been a tough play to make. Yeah. He's that good. That brings up Swazi. Morissette, by the way, his average now goes to over 450 for the season. Swazi's got a couple of hits. He's also got a couple of steals today. Yeah. And Morissette's got a steal. First pitch is a ball to Swazi. See three for three in terms of stolen bases on the base pass. As I said earlier, Clemson had allowed opponents just 10 for 20 on steals coming into this game. They have been perfect today on their tries. Not to throw back to try to check that runner. Last hit was the 13th of the day for the Eagles. Clemson has 11. 1 0 pitch, fly ball. Coming in hard for it is the right fielder Brewer. He'll call off Henderson to make the grab, and there's two down. Just got under it. Henderson was hustling over there, but. Brewer makes the play. And then brings up Jack Cunningham with two down, a runner at first. Cunningham had that solo home run in the second. He also reached in the fifth. Ground ball. It will get by on the right side. They will hold... Morissette at second. Second hit of the inning for the Eagles. And now the go-ahead run is at second with two out for Luke Gold. That's the ninth hit for the number two through five batters in the order for Austin College. They've been unbelievable today. We've finally gotten through that group. Yeah. Although here is Luke Gold who does have a big hit in this game. He had that two-run single way back in the third. He's also the only player in the game for either team with three RBIs. Huh. 
Yeah, he had also had that sack fly in the fifth. Yeah. Ground ball. Anderson has trouble with it, comes up throwing, and the Tigers get out of the inning. So Spires gives up a couple of hits, but no damage done. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth inning. The five, six, and seven hitters up for Clemson in a 6-6 tie. Bottom of the ninth inning, a back and forth affair at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. Clemson jumped out to a 1-0 lead in this game. BC came back to take a 2-1 edge. Tigers responded by going up 3-2 before falling behind 6-3, and Clemson has come all the way back. We are tied at 6 in the bottom of the ninth inning. John Campbell Jr. is the pitcher for BC, and at the plate is Davis Sharp. Sharp has a single for his one hit of the day. Second pitch is missed. One note of interest, Boston College has not given up a walk-off home run to lose a game since March 16th, 2000, excuse me, since March 20th, 2016, Ooh. when Seth Beer did it right here. <laughs> That's the last time they gave up a walk-off home run. Davis Sharp will watch on, walk on four pitches, and the winning run is at first. And very quickly, you had one uh, BC reliever warming up, and now they're starting to work a second. They had a pinch runner at first. So Sam Hall. Plenty of speed there. He will come in to pinch run for Davis Sharp. All had 30 stolen bases last year in 37 attempts. Leading the ACC is the most stolen bases in a season by a Clemson player since 1994. It looks like Boston College is close to making another pitching change, and they are going to make one. So with the winning run at first and nobody out, Another BC pitcher. When we come back, it is all tied at six. We're in the bottom of the ninth. Michael Marzoni is the new pitcher for Boston College, a junior from Greenwich, Connecticut, making his eighth appearance of the season. No record. He's got a 4.50 ERA. He's pitched 10 innings. He's given up five earned runs on 12 hits. He struck out 10, six walks on the year, and opponents batting 293 against him. He comes on with the winning run at first with nobody out here in the bottom of the ninth. And he pitched yesterday against the Tigers, pitched a third of an inning, gave up a hit and a walk. Faced three total batters. So Boston College... going with their sixth pitcher of the day. So funny to think back of it now. Sheehan pitched through 92 pitches as he, in four innings, and they've had to go with five pitchers ever since. But right now in a tough spot, you got to give a lot of credit to Clemson's pitching because they've the relief staff has kept them in this game they fell behind 6-3 to three in the fifth, and it's been nothing but zeros for Boston College since. Yes, done a very good job. Clemson kind of fought their way back into it. Single runs in the fifth, the seventh, and the eighth. And now you got Sam Hall at first after Davis Sharp walked. And Chad Ferry is going to be coming to the plate. Chad is hitless on the day, 0 for 3, but he does have a walk. But Chad Ferry stands in there. Waits for the first pitch from Marzoni. In there for a ball. Ferry, 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 
Sam Hall is just good. one steal of the season in his one attempt. Struggling a bit at the play, just hasn't had too many opportunities yeah. to run. That's Correct. the main thing. Yep. The pitch to Ferry. Call for a strike. One and one. Delayed call a little bit. Yeah. The quick throw back to Sam Hall. Sharp had the leadoff walk and then was replaced with Hall as the pinch runner. And they will continue to work Sam at first. Waiting for the 1-1 pitch. And after Ferry sets up to bunt, Morris set came in from third, and they just make the quick throw over to first. Point out the Boston College outfield is really deep. Yeah. Runner going. Here's the throw. It won Hopper, and it's not in time. And there's now the winning run is in scoring position. Sam Hall, his second steal of the season. But now the umpires are going to all come together and have a meeting in front of the mound. Well, that's close. Yeah, they're going to review it. They'll review it. That is really close. They did not waste any time as we're going to get some looks at it before they do. You're seeing some of the replays right now. This will be a good view of it. And I think we're going to probably just be holding it right here. It's, we're not trying to build up the suspense. We're waiting for the, the umpire to get a chance to look at it himself and go back and forth. But you can see the one umpire right there. I mean, he's got the great position on it. You're right. He's in <clears throat> perfect position. This might be our best. Now you can't tell when the tag is yeah. made from that angle. This might be a good one right here. Great camera work, by the way, to our crew. We're going frame by frame at this point. He is safe He's by safe. a no margin, yeah. it looks like to me. And look at the umpire right on top of it. Now you get a super slow-mo at it. He's coming back out, and we're going to get our call. If he's safe, he's safe by about two inches and maybe a, not a, a millisecond. Safe is the call. So a huge stolen base there by Sam Hall. So now the winning run is at second with nobody out. And Chad Ferry's got a 2-1 count. That extra speed Sam Hall has that extra yeah. one one hundredth of a second. Man. I know why the uh, NFL puts such a high party on 40 times. Yeah. <laughs> Ferry squares up to bunt. Lays it down. Hall making the run for third. He's in head first. There is the sacrifice by Ferry, and now the winning run is 90 feet away with only one out. Bill Wilhelm might have even bunted there. Yeah, he might have. <laughs> Monty doesn't do it all that much. Yeah. James Parker, the shortstop, comes up.
with the speedy Sam Hall at third with one out. Parker doubled the last time up. That was just the fifth sacrifice of the year for Clemson. We got a delay right here as Scott Klein looking over at the Boston College dugout. Let's see if they're going to make another pitching change here. Six six our score, bottom of the ninth. Boston College has led since all the way back in the third when they went up four to three. Yeah, we had three lead changes in the first three innings, and now we hadn't had one since. Yeah. All right, they break that up. They will keep Marzoni in there. Got another shift right here. You've got three infielders between second and third for Boston College. Infield is in. Three guys on the left side of second base. The outfield is still not all that shallow. A lot more shallow than they were. Parker's ground ball. A play at the plate, the throw, it will be wide. He's safe, Sam Hall is in. Clemson wins, Clemson sweeps. James Parker comes up big. He got just enough of it, and Sam Hall, that is manufacturing a run to win a ball game. Yes, it is. Actually, they'll do it without a benefit of a base hit as that'll be scored a fielder's choice for, uh, for Parker. But most importantly, he gets the game-winning RBI. What a way to battle back and get a sweep in this one. Clemson trailed 6-3. to three, And Monty Lee talks about winning those last nine outs. And Clemson put a run on the board in the 7th, 8th, and ninth. Ball was really uh, kind of on the inside part of the bat, but he just got enough of it to get it out and get it past the pitcher. That was important. If yeah. the pitcher would be able to field it, he would have been uh, dead to rights at home plate. Brian Dempsey tried to make the throw home, but Sam Hall was there in time, and it's a standing ovation from this crowd at Clemson as the Tigers earn a sweep to start the ACC season, and they get that last victory in dramatic fashion. First time this year, Boston College has lost a game in which they led after six innings. So the Tigers will get a walk-off win in this one and a great start to the ACC season for Clemson. As Clemson now improves to 3-0 in the conference, they are 12-3 overall. And Boston College is now 5-9, and nine, and they will head back north with an 0-3 mark in the conference. Well, we're glad you stuck around with us for this, this one. Tigers. Nearly a four-hour game, but it was worth it. Yeah. Absolutely. There's Monty Lee talking to some of the fans, as he should for good reason, as his team is victorious. And this was a fun one for Tim Beret and our entire crew. This is Fred Cunningham saying goodbye. From Doug Kingsmore Stadium at Clemson, the Tigers rally and uh, get a walk-off win in the bottom of the ninth to knock off BC by a final score of 7-6. to six. To watch this entire game on replay as well as other games on ACC Network, download the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.